Let's go. It's been a long time. Oh, he did? Yes, ma'am, he did. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, I guess I'm off on my game tonight. Good evening, doctor. Um, or this evening. Good, Good evening, everybody. Thank you Good so much. Yes, thank you so very much for coming on this holiday. Um, and tonight, what we'll be doing, as I indicated, we will not be having any group presentations this evening. We just want to use the next two, several days to go through the lectures, do as much as we can. And on Thursday, we'll have the two present, final presentations. And I will try to put in, I do a lecture before for the first hour on special topics in child and adolescent therapy. So stay tuned for that. Um, the treatment approach is basically the notes are online, Koja, so there's what a, we have Koja, got. There's a, um, feedback. Koja, there's a feedback. Oh, on yours. No. Ours, are, ours, ours are okay. Yeah, ours are okay. Uh, just just um, mute the mics. Mute the mics. Everybody else mute their mics. And Nadia, when you come on, mute your mic. You can go ahead, Dr. Mark. Yes, I was just saying that uh, I was just saying that we will try our best to get through the syllabus. We are we are catching up, and people have been very cooperative, and, I, and we do appreciate it very much for students to make the sacrifice to get this class with all the challenges technologically. Um, I, I I have in fact put. The treatment approaches on weeks four and five, you are open to go and look at, on it because, um, as I said, whatever is, is discussed in the groups, we will not be discussing. What I'm going to be discussing, paying attention primarily in, in the treatment approaches is play. I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to look at Santre, and I'm going to touch on one or two uh, approaches. I can't hear anything. I'm hearing jumbles, jumbles, jumbles. Um, but um, I'm hearing though. Everybody else hearing? I'm hearing. I guess you can go ahead and pray. Keep Maybe hearing. We are good. We are okay, there we are. need to, Miss, uh, Miss, um, Miss Mitchell, would you be kind enough since you brought it up? I just no. saw it. Go ahead and have God's presence in the class, please. Sure. So Let we us continue. Pray. Let us pray. Kind and loving Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy most holy name. This evening, Lord, as we come to class to learn more and to share, we ask you to pardon and forgive us for our sin and give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Bless our lecturer, Dr. Madderma. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you. Um, so as I was saying, that um, we, we have normally the class before was five weeks. This, this time it's four weeks. And um, we have to combine weeks four and five from the class last week. So there's a lot of notes that are there. Um, I've also attached uh, a therapy activity book for you free of cost. It's a PDF five of all the activities for children and adolescents. So you're free to use that or download it from the platform. Um, there are also videos on, on clips on the several approaches that we have. As I said before, the one on play therapy, I'm going to be touching that at length and, 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 and so forth, and Santre, and we'll be looking at one or two more approaches. I did also say that whatever approaches we have discussed in, in the class by groups, we will not be touching here. Um, so for tonight's lecture, we are going to be continuing with the case of Justin. So while Mr. Niame uh, um, puts the, the case on the screen, I am going to be continuing with the with the processes of case conceptualization, and um, that we can go ahead with the case, get that case, or that that people can see what a case conceptualization, what a case formulation is, and because I know people have had some trepidations about the case, 
But there's no, really no need to worry knowledge of psychopathology and understanding how to deal with, with cases. So the last time we were, we were on the topic of conceptualization, I recall being on, we were on diagnosis. Am I correct? Can somebody refresh my memory if, if I'm correct? Can someone refresh my memory? We were on the case of diagnosis, and we were talking about justing and diagnosing and getting to the diagnosis. We're Can somebody also go on back to their notes and remind me, please? We also were looking at case conceptualization. We were talking, well, yeah, but case conceptualization is part, um, diagnosis is part of case conceptualization. That's under that, 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 that category we are talking about. Mm, we dealt with the method. So I just want you to know where I was. We, we talked about gather clinical data. We talked about tasks and processes of case conceptualization. Mm. We looked at gather clinical data, find the presenting problems. Then we were on providing a diagnosis. That's where I recall stopping. Is that okay. where we were? I guess. I think that's where we were. So I believe that's where we were. So while Mr. Nyame puts the case back on screen, let me just, I know before last time I had talked about, uh, we were talking about age and time of onset. And I know people were still having some difficulties trying to differentiate. So I'm, I, I went through the trouble today to prepare my notes and I'm gonna be making certain that people understand exactly because it's very, very crucial. But we understand in terms of looking at child, Dr. a child case Dr. or a teenager. Yes. Dr. Yes. Mark, we were at case and process of case. We were at case and process of case conceptual. Oh, Lord. It's Task and processes of case. I, I said that. And under that heading, we were at diagnosis. Uh -uh. I did say that. We are under the task and processes of case conceptualization, that heading. And we had a number of... Uh, of, of I, we had I, I have I have at least I have eight tasks and processes which I have not touched yet. I'm, I'm on the third one. That's where we are. Tasks and processes of case conceptualization. Are everybody on the same page? Where we are? Yes, that's everybody right. on the same page. Okay. Yeah. No, I was I was saying that people, some people are still confused about age of onset. Since we're on the topic of diagnosis, it fits in that age and, and time of onset. I'm gonna take some time again to go through. So while Mr. Nyame puts the 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 case, Mr. Nyame is the case gonna be up, please. Mr. Nyame, is the case gonna be up? Yeah, I'm trying to find it because I didn't know you were gonna okay. be tonight. Yeah, just yes, in one. My apologies. One, which yes, Justin, Justin. Justin, and while you're at it, put up a Q, um, there is, there is a, in PDF form, there is one on uh, the TCC forms, the, the child um, and, adult, and uh, adolescent intake, and the supplemental intake, please. Could you load those up, please? That's a lot. Let me just take a note. Let me just take Okay, stick to the stick to the case first. Okay, all right. All right. So basically what I was saying. Go here, that, me that. So basically what I was saying that in a in a child adolescent case, age and time of onset is extremely important. Whereas in an adult case, age of onset would suggest that there is a continuity in terms of adult disorders. In a child, it's where the, the, it starts, the process starts in childhood and tends to continue on into adulthood. So when you have an adult case, the child would have already gone through a chronicity of, of, of symptoms to get to an adult case. So let's look at age of onset very quickly. And then we look at time, and then I'm going to uh, continue on with the tasks and processes. Age of onset, and listen carefully. Then, if you have, you're still confused, ask questions. A clinical variable in childhood disorders. 
I'm sorry, Doctor Mac. I missed you for a little while. I, I I couldn't hear what you were saying. Would you be? Could you repeat what you were just saying? I said um, the age of onset. Age of onset. I said age of onset is extremely important in okay. childhood disorders, psychiatric disorders, in case formulation. It is extremely important because it is where uh, it, the age in this case is progressive. And it's based upon it's it is based upon what is known as pathogenesis. In other words, that's where the course starts in childhood. So we when we look at age of onset, we are looking then at the first appearance. We're looking at the first appearance of or signs of this of of, uh, of an illness. Age of onset is basically part of the clinical progression known as pathogenesis. A little bit of psychopath, but pathogenesis, pathogenesis. And it is first, the first appearance or signs of an illness. It will alert you to a number of risk factors that will be pro progressive. The risk factors will be progressive and continuing into 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 uh, into into a. Uh, Possible severi uh, severity of the symptoms. It will, can progress into possible severity of symptoms. So that early intervention strategies can be made to treat this disorder. So basically, age of onset is a, is a first appearance of signs and symptoms of an illness. So, for example, conduct disorder, antisocial uh, uh, um, antisocial anti disorder is is the is the derivative of conduct disorder, ch uh, childhood type. So the more serious it is, the more the, the so the more severe the disorder is, the more it is likely to continue into adulthood. So the derivative of conduct is antisocial personality disorder. So it's a severe type of that, which continued throughout time. Is that clear? So one of the risks of conduct disorder would have been what? Maternal factors, absence of protective factors from the home, parental styles, the child's temperament, the family. Those are risk factors. So age of onset is stable. It's always stable. It never changes. Age of onset is stable. Reference age of onset is stable and refers to chronological age. It's very it's stable and it's also predictable. And occurs during the critical period of development. I talked about that before. I will go back into that before. I, I mentioned that earlier in the in the course. During the critical period of development, when the disorders are when 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 are there, there is a great risk for the disorders to develop. So, for example, <clears throat> an example of that is separation anxiety disorder, which is a specific disorder of anxiety, a specific disorder of anxiety that develops in childhood first between five and seven at the pre-operational stage of development, between five and seven at the pre-operational stage, 10 to 11. the concrete operational stage, 
10 to 11 and 14 to 16 at the formal operational stage. So basically you need to know that a, a separation anxiety is when there is, in a separation anxiety, know that the, in terms of the attachment, the, it's, a, it's, a, it's very secure. It's secure attachment, the family dynamics are stable, but when there is a an, an in, that when there is a environmental stressor introduced into the family called a diastasis, when there is an environmental stressor introduced in the family called a diastasis, D I A T H E S I S, a diastasis. It means that there is the the child response to object loss or, 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 or fear of losing an object in the family dynamics. So that's it for, so that's it so far for separation. Another one I want you to know is childhood fluency disorder. This occurs between two and seven years old. It has not, it cannot, if it occurs after, it's not a childhood fluency disorder. Um, it must Dr. occur Mark. between. Yes. Dr. Mack, yes. I'm a little confused. We're talking about age of onset, right? Yes. I have moved into something else. No, I'm continuing with age of onset. I'm giving okay. examples. So, oh, these are examples. That's correct. This shift of emphasis. separation anxiety disorder, and I talked about what that means, and I'm now talking about another example called childhood fluency disorder. Is that something? Is that I hear noise? I hear. Could someone mute their mics, please? I'm hearing noise. Michelle, Michelle, mute your mic, Michelle. Okay. Um, I'm just saying that with a childhood fluency disorder, this occurs. The the time frame, the critical period for this to occur is between two and seven years old. If it occurs after, this is not a child with fluency disorder. So, that, so basically that's it for age of onset. It's stable, predictable, and operates in a critical period. It, it, in other words, it first appears, there's a first appearance of signs, or there's appearance of symptoms of an illness. That's age of onset. So in, in Justin's, in Justin, uh, he was nine years old, but the problem started when he was two, age of onset. So the age of onset with Justin is age two. So if you go, we have to go back and check the DSM, but that's the, that is the progression. Now let's look at time of onset. So are we clear with age of onset finally? Are we clear? Hello? Not so clear, not so clear for me, Dr. Mark, but go on. Uh, what is it yes, not clear for you? What is it not clear for you? I think what happened is that um in your in your discourse on it, it kinda got mixed up with so many other things that I kinda lost track. But it's okay, I'll forget all. Right, so okay, we can talk about it another, another time. Um Yes, Dr. Mark. Let's look at time of onset. Time of onset then is duration. How long it takes to develop? Not the first appearance of it, not when it starts. How long is it taking to develop to get to where it is? So, so, so it's a, it's a it, in other words, there's duration that 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 from a cause in terms of etiology, meaning a cause. Course, does it take two weeks to develop? A day, a month, six months, a year? And it also talks about in terms of the features of it. What it is, what, what it is that, how, how does it develop? So we are looking at time. So in other words, we are looking at, a, 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 we are looking at then, is it based upon days, months, or years? So it's normally also linked to risk factors and rotters indicators. We also went through rotters. I will not go through that again this time. Risk factors and rotters indicators. So it's a, it's, it's a process which involves 
the onset of, gen of gen ge uh, genetics, environment, and personal factors. So that's time of onset. Is it clear now, ladies and gentlemen? Can you look at Justin and see why is time of onset and why is age of onset? Can you not look and make a comparison of having made this clarification? Um, Dr. Mark, Can we do that? When you brought it up the last time, the time of onset was a little troubling, both for myself and Marshall, I believe. And in trying to understand it, because I understand you're giving us the notes and everything, but sometimes a little bit more practicability um, helps me. I don't know about anybody else. And so um, when you explained it to us, he was two when, he, when the issue started. He was two when um, he was two, he was at age two. And then at age nine, he was taken to the counseling center. So I had asked at that time if the time of onset then would be seven years, which means that yes. I started at two yeah. and came to yes. So the difference Absolutely. between the two would have been seven. Yes. So in other words, it took seven years for the per, for the situation to got so bad that it's 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 chronic. So it's seven okay. years. That's time of onset. Okay. That's time oh, of that's that's basically what it is. Uh huh. So just for, yes. just for clarification, the, the time of onset is progressive then. It's over time. It's not say it's not Yes, it, it, yes, it's 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 not it's not it's it 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 takes in other words it can be one day it, it, it it's it's progressive but it's unpredictable because you don't know. You can't say. In this case this child starts to act out at nine. He could have acted out at six, he could have acted out at five. But this is when he acted out. So would you so say like, yes? what what may we say? In, in, in extend the time of onset, so you would consider the it, it started from say say for example for the, for this case it's a it started from pregnancy in terms of it's a it's a disorder not for this case but it's a disorder that started from pregnancy. So we are looking at say the mother was a, an alcoholic abuser and it had uh -huh. affected the child. So uh, can we say the time of onset would be from since it's on a, on a developmental basis? So it's developing from the womb, the child um, into birth, into going in as a child. Um, would you say the time of onset could be from then, in terms of as more of a progressive thing? Or are you just you're well, just you would, okay, you would, you would look at well. I see your point. I see where you're going with that. But you could look, but you, but you more have to look at time of onset in terms of when the child's, in terms of okay. Let me make more clear. Time of onset can also be linked to cognitive development. So even though it was the child may have developed the risk factor, what okay, let me ask people, what was the risk? What was one of the primary risk factors in the case? Which is what's the risk which is, what risk factor is there that caught, is causing this problem? What's the risk factor? Fetal what's the alcohol, major fetal risk factor? Alcohol. Fetal alcohol, alcohol syndrome. syndrome. Yes. So that's one major risk factor. Right. Are there any rotus indicators? Yes, the maternal pathology. Right. Okay, so there's maternal pathology in that the, the child was abandoned. Are there any attachment and issues? You, these are the questions you ask. And once you ask okay. these questions, just like hypothesizing at that first part, then you begin to think about what diagnosis are you coming up with. You get me? Yes, so if there are attachment Mark, issues. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Here, uh -huh. but here's the thing, Doctor Mark. We kind of uh, we're running from one thing to the next, and I understand what um what Rhonda is saying, and she's saying that if when the mother has this child in her tummy, and the, the, from the child is born, in this case, say for instance, fet fetal alcohol syndrome, it yes. could mean that when the child was born, the child had a a, a mental problem from that time, cognitively. We might not know because maybe they can't really articulate or whatever it is at that age. So what what I believe Rhonda is asking, and I'm asking also based on her example, is it then that the, 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 the time of onset would be from birth to nine, which would be nine years? Or is when the problem is presenting, when you see behavior? No, 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 no. Well, 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 or when well, you see presenting. That's a, very, that's a very good analysis, but in this case, I'm not saying it's going to be for any other case. I'm saying in this particular case, the time of onset is when the problem started. So a not toddler, 
not specifically this case, Dr. Mike. For, for me to understand, I, I just need to understand. So, mm -hmm. if, it, if using Rhonda's example, if yes. the child is born and the child is sick, would it be nine years or would it be when the, 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 the presenting problem started, which could be one year old? No, when the presenting, when, no, you can, okay, you can have risk factors, a child can be a toddler and nothing happens, but it okay. starts happening when the child is three years old. That's when okay. it started. In other words, okay. in, in, in other words a, a, a toddler is a child is at risk. Is at suppose risk. you never ever, Go suppose ahead. you never gave us, suppose you never gave us an age. Suppose you never gave us an age and you said um, when the child when the child began to exhibit um, um, signs of, um, you know, some kind of deviancy or 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 truancy or some something I don't know, but suppose you never gave us a time, but you gave us risk factors that we could identify. Would the time of okay, you would have to make to, well, you would have to yeah, you would have to make okay, very good question, very good analysis. Your your thinking. And then in that case, you are going to have to use your judgment to determine what the possible time of onset could be. Because you may not, are you correct, you may not always get it in the case. But in most, as far as I know, in most child adolescent cases, the time is there, the age is there. You are going to have to figure it out. If you don't have the, you will, you will not always have the DSM in front of you. And it, and, and, Yes. Dr. Mark, mm -hmm. would it be fair to say that then that um, the time of onset must be observable then? So if, if we are going to say the time of onset is, is nine or seven, it's observable. So yes, we know that the child has an issue with fetal alcohol syndrome, but yes. it was observable at that age. But no, it, it has been observed. The behavior is not. So what we are, the time of onset is then tied to behavior. So we yes, but the behavior is clinical. It's, it's, the, it's there. The, okay, it, yeah, but it's there in the body of the the, the, the case, and I'm glad this okay. is coming up because remember that the child had fetal. You, you don't necessarily have to have fetal alcohol syndrome and have problems. What made it worse was the fact that he was abandoned, and that's when it started, not when he was a toddler. He had the fetal alcohol syndrome, so he was a toddler. You wouldn't see that kind of behavior. Yeah pronounced as a when he was two years old. So the, so the more you progress along the life cycle, the, the developmental stage, the more the behaviors become more pronounced. Is it clearer? Okay. Yeah, I as think a toddler, I'm getting it that it's... As a toddler, you wouldn't have these kind of problems as a toddler. But at two years old, there's object permanence. What is the pre, what is sensory motor stage at PAJ? Let's, let's get it. Let's look at it. Birth to two is this child the sen at the central motor stage, PJ's and PJ's uh, 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 development. This is when he started to act up. Object permanence. Objects that are disappear are still there. So the child has object permanence. The child has what? The child. The, what other? What other? What other? What other features of of sensor? You need to be aware of PJ's, and I, I want to strongly recommend it again. You need to familiarize yourself with PJ's theory of cognitive development for you to understand. It's also important. So as a toddler, you probably will have, you probably be irritable, but it's not as pronounced. At two years old, the straw that broke the camel's back, precipitating, mother left him, so he started to act out. That's when you need to look at time of onset. I can't be a bit more specific than that. So, so, so let's, so let, so let me, so, so therefore, so with, so with time, you have to look at, at the concept of genetics, environment, and personal. Is there any evidence in the vignette of all that I'm talking about? Look at it. Is there any evidence in the vignette of genetical predisposition? Any predisposing factors? Yeah. Any perpetuating yes, factors? Are there any evidence and protective factors in it? Are there any evidence in the vineyard? Yes. Come. Are there any evidence? Are there any evidence? You're blank. Yes or no? He had 
Poor pet prenatal care. What's that? Poor pet prenatal care. When his mother yes. was pregnant, him, that was a predisposing. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that he was in in a child child or CD I had to take him, so that would be called precipitating. Per per. Yes. Um, yes. Protective factors. Yes. I'm not hearing the student. Protective factors. The fact that he. He has um, parents who were willing to provide, yeah. um, you know, the care what that he needs, the care that he needs. I was there not any protective factors in the beginning? No. The protective factors. That's the question to ask. What center was the protective there? Protective factors. The fact that his 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 um his foster parents are willing to to facilitate to provide all, all that he needs. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, no, hold on a moment. I'm <laughs> asking the question because I, 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 I don't. I'm, 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 I'm wondering if, if people understand what is a protective factor. What did I say a protective factor was? What did I say it was? <sighs> what did I say a protective factor was? I. Uh, it's. I am very, very yeah. I'm certain. I explained what a protective factor was. I, I did it. I explained it. It's the role of the caregiver in creating a stimulating and nourishing environment for the child to try. That's what it is. Is hmm. there any evidence of protective factors in the vineyard? No. Yes, yes or no? Yes, yes there's no. I had said it. In term, okay, let me put it another way. Yes. In terms of the previous, before he was adopted, I should maybe. Oh, let me, before maybe, he was oh, adopted, no. Okay. Because we haven't gone to the, we are, we are looking at the first three paragraphs, and so far oh, okay. are, there, oh, there was okay. no protective Sorry. factors that no created this problem. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't be. There was no protective factors. Mm -hmm. All right. So, 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 okay. So let's continue on the diagnosis. So there are, basic, there are basically then a new heading. I'm going to, I'm going off from age of onset. And they are now based upon still we're looking at that we're thinking about diagnosis. But under that, there are four main domains when we look at childhood cases for you to think about. Four main domains or categories, I should say. Four main domains. I need to get this in. I have to get it in. One, four main domains of four of cases, any case at all. And you need to tell me which one this is. One, emotional problems. With a child with kids, there may be emotional problems with a child. Emotional problems. Emotional problems. Two, conduct problems. Conduct problems. Three, Developmental delays. Developmental delays. Developmental delays and four relationship difficulties. Of the four, which are predominant in this case? The alcohol, fetal alcohol syndrome. Miss 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 Crawford, I talked about four domains. When okay. looking at child, and I gave them to you, I'm asking you of the four I just gave you, which one is predominant? That's not a domain. That's Emotional. a risk factor. I've seen developmental delays, even though I'm seeing a lot of conduct And problems. why developmental delays, Miss Bedwell? Because when you look at it, if you go down further in the case, you'll see that he can't, he, his, his, um, in terms of he being steady, he's knocking his head on the decks. Um, there's evidence, even though he showed aggression, you find that it's more aggression is seemingly caused by the development of his beliefs. So we're finding that he's I'm trying to find the um where seeing the council he 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 did not he didn't have any in terms of pollution. Um we talk about him uh, trying to find the exact thing. 
But I know in, in council, the, the, the council observed that the mm -hmm. people had a touching, had a scars, and then he was picking up something from the floor. He was bumping his head in, on the deck and stuff like that. So I'm thinking maybe the behavior, behavior aspect of it is caused by these developmental beliefs. I'm wondering if it's emotional. And I'm seeing okay. I, 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 that, coming from. Well, I, I'm trying to get people to, to, to have a conversation here. Why emotional? I see conduct problems as um emotional and conduct problems. Sorry? I see Emo conduct problems. Emotional. I think emotional problems. I see this, Nadia. Um is it is is it is, 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 he has been emotional because um, um all that he has been through. Yes. And hello, Jean says yeah. developmental delays. Okay, I'm gonna see the questions now. Mr. Nami, could you help me with the questions, please? I only saw two. Not seeing the rest. Could you paste them please and I can see them and because I'm looking to see if I see any questions. Could you feel them please? Yes, Mr. Barr, some, I heard you. He got so much adjusting that he ran away. It's emotional. Yes, Dr. Mark, that was the comment that I was going to make in relation to um, Hello, Gina and Renee. About the about what? The, the emotional? Emotion. Yeah, about what they said Renee in terms said of the relationship. And mm -hmm. Hello, Gina said um, developmental, developmental delays and re yes. relationship difficulties. Okay. Now, now, the, the, now, these domains are what you normally find a child case. You may have one, or you may have all four. Yes. Do, do you suspect in this case you have all four? Oh, yes. Yes, there is all four. So, yes. So may, yes, there are evidence of all four. Anybody else? You two people, anybody else? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I was saying there is evidence. All four. Thank you, Miss Crawford. I heard. So, I'm sorry. I, I did not oh. acknowledge. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, all I, four. Yes. Yeah, I was just wondering something I, I about my mind. Um, in, in, in the case of conduct, though, I want to be clear that um, it should be conduct, and let me add, and behavioral problem, because in a conduct problem, it will, in, when, you, when there's a conduct, problem with conduct, there is a violation of social norms. And in this case, He's, the child is not violating, so the child is just being able to act out. So I want to be very, very clear, and I should have made a, a reference to that. There is conduct slash behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. So when, if it's a conduct, you'll see a more a, a teen, a, a, a younger child, older child who is who is clearly acting out and creating other problems. Doctor Matt. So so I yes. Sorry, yes. where would where would brain um problems with with where would brain development disorder um, come into this? Brain what? I don't know if it could. Hello? I'm hearing you, I'm listening. Right, brain. where would neurological I'm problems to... come, come into this? In what do you think? What, where, where, do you, where do you think, Ms. Crawford? Tell me where do you think it may be. I, I was thinking of developmental delays, but I don't know because I'm saying, what if the person uh, meets an accident? Right, and then as a result, the person is is you know acting up. I, I'm not well, sure if well, that if so, can there. some smart person look at the video and tell me where the developmental delay would be? What uh, what other indicator or what other risk factor would suggest that in the video? Um, what other risk factor or what other would suggest that? Um, I know that the, the fetal alcohol syndrome would suggest that. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. So, fetal alcohol syndrome. If you if you look at fetal al alcohol syndrome, it and is it's a, it's a teratogen. Yes. And it's it's a very very severe disturbance. It's a very it's a it's a it's it's a very severe deficit due to alcohol abuse during pregnancy, and that's part of the risk factor that causes child to be behaving like this. On top of the environmental stressors of, of loss of attachment, this is what's causing it. All right, let's let's scroll down. Let's scroll down and look and, and continue with the, with the case. I want to finish this case this evening. So let's scroll down. 
Mr. Nyame, please, that we can see the rest of it. So, Dr. Makigos, when you pick up from where you left off, or you know, when you start from the top again? No, 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 I'm not, I don't have time. Okay. I, I suppose everybody, uh, okay, are, are people okay with the top? I don't, I didn't plan to go back there at all. We're gonna, I'm we're gonna, not okay with the top because I wasn't in the there. check the last time. It was very okay, confusing. What are, what are your concerns about the... The, the whole of it, Dr. Mac. I would prefer if we just run through, since we went through it already, just to go through it quickly. It's all right. All yes. right, well, Mr. Nyame, could you go back up to the first three paragraphs? I don't know if that's fine with everybody else, but I think if we just get up, well, for mm -hmm. me. You can find out from the rest, Dr. Mac. I don't want to keep up with you. Okay, mm -hmm. are, are everybody in agreement with going back to the case to just to make a, to make a comparison? Can you go ahead. The enforcement from, is always good. All right. So, so basically, yes. What, yes. what I'm saying to you is then is that, is that uh, when we have a case, Right. In terms of the conceptualization, <clears throat> we are looking. If you have to look at uh, identif and identifying factors in the case. So in this case, the first two lines normally tell you what the problem is. What 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 you are getting. What's the referral? What is the referral? A nine <clears throat> excuse me. A nine-year-old boy was referred. And the referral also comes with what the problem is. Solve the problem for me. Increasing behavioral problems of an aggression and with peers at school. So when you see these two lines, you are looking at, it tells you a lot. I mean, without even looking at the whole case, I could probably go on and hypothesize about what this problem with this child is. So we're looking at the indicator, it's a nine-year-old boy. This is a nine-year-old <clears throat> pre-operational boy who was referred because he had increasing behavioral problems and aggression. Let me ask you, Michelle and others, internalizing or externalizing behaviors? Internalizing or externalizing behaviors? Let's, externalizing let's the Dr. Mark. And why? Externalizing Ex Dr. Mark. Externalizing. Why? Why? Yeah. why? why? Okay, why? The behavioral because problems, the aggression. Towards his peers, because this is visible and it's observable. So it's observable. in terms of run it it's now beginning to permeate outside of the home and affecting the school and peers. Am I correct? Yes. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, Dr. Mark. Yes, Dr. Mark. Yes. Externalizing and affecting the Okay. Peers. So so that's why he was sent. So look in a case you look for why why was he referred why they're bringing him to this why they're coming here for treatment why is he coming so it has to be that there are it the, the problem either the child is internalizing withdrawing from the world and from peers into himself or the child is externalizing acting out from himself to the environment internalizing from the environment into himself, withdrawing. So we are looking then at more mood, anxiety, but with an externalizing, the child is now beginning to take, is to show that frustration behaviorally outside of himself. So, Ella Jean said the second, externalizing because he showed I am not, I need aggression. to see I need to see the questions uh, posted I cannot I, I, I need to see it I'm still looking could you put somebody post the, the Mr. Name could you post the question is he there I see him he's disappeared so Name could you post the questions please is this is this is it relation because he ran away is that is that and consistent. But no, Dr. Matt, that's not hers. No, that's so consistent. We haven't even dared that. I mean, I'm looking at the, we're going back to the second paragraph. Um, um, Dr. Mac, um, no, Hello Jean is saying it is externalizing because he showed signs like aggression and such. I'm not seeing that. Um, I'm not seeing that question at no, all. No, no, because we're looking at it on the um on the chat line. It hasn't come over to you as yet. Oh, okay. And yeah, and then Renee is because I'm, when I look and I'm going, I can't see it, and so I'm, I'm right. Confused. And then Renee okay. is saying, Dr. Mac, Renee is also saying external because it is impacting his environment, and his problem was evident because problems were seeing. 
problems were seen. Negative, problems were seen. Like now. Okay. Negative behavior. You've seen it? Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. Very good. So, but let's you continue. Saw it now? Yes, I'm seeing it. So, so, but, but, so let's look at the second paragraph. We are seeing causation. We are seeing the development of time. We are looking at now what's causing the possible causes of this of, of the first line, two lines. That this child, when you start to conceptualize, this child had a real a major risk factor called fetal alcohol syndrome. And if someone can, I mean, I. Can someone help with, by looking up what fetal alcohol is? It's a very, very serious disorder. It's irreversible, number one. So once you have those symptoms, it, you can't, it can't be cured. You're going to have problems for life. So we have a, so we, and plus, so we look at, we are looking at several strikes towards this young man. He developed when he was a toddler. However, it never, the problem didn't manifest itself until he was two years old. So, so, so at two, we start seeing time of onset coming along. Problems start to manifest when his parents abandoned, when his mother abandoned him. He was put into adoption. So we have what kind of attachment, ladies and gentlemen? Possible. We are thinking, we are making, we are formulating the case. We are formulating a case. We are formulating hypotheses. We are saying these are the hypotheses. From basically from what from the from the referral and the presenting complaint, or what is presenting to us that this child had a poor uh, maternal uh, uh, um, relationship, had pregnancy issues. Are you are you are you with me? Yes, yes, Dr. Mark. Yes, Dr. Mark. And uh, the child had an insecure attachment, so there was no protective factors in the in in uh, in this child's life. No stableness, no consistency, no predictability, no stability. So he was placed at age two, look, listen carefully, this is what it's saying here, at age two years old in, the, in, a, in a child children's home of safety. So she abandoned him at two years old because we can infer as the, as, the alcohol, as the syndrome started to take its effect, it started to act out. She couldn't deal with it. Do you see that? Do you see that? You have to learn to make inferences from the, what you see here. Do you see that? Yes, Dr. Mark. I'm not hearing that the yes, students. Dr. Yes, Dr. Mark, you see that. Okay, so let's continue now. So, 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 we, are, so we are continuing. So we so we are so so we so we get all the data, we define the problem and we're putting a diagnosis. If you were to start to think, what would you what would come to your mind? These are the clinical indicators. Attachment, poor attachment, fetal alcohol syndrome, aggression, behavior problems. What what would you start to think about this child? The first two paragraphs. We have not touched the case yet. I have a lot of things in my mind I could talk about. What would you think? Ask the question again, Dr. Ma. I'm saying, what are your hypotheses? What are you beginning to think about this case? As you're seeing this child in an interview, mm -hmm. we want to touch on the clinical interview this evening. That's why I'm trying to get this rush this thing out. What, mm -hmm. tell me, what are you thinking about in this case? They ask some questions. When we look at what? Aggression and? Aggression, behavioral problems, fetal alcohol syndrome, attachment problems. What kind of disorders would you be thinking about? Um, conduct disorder would come to mind, Dr. Why? Conduct for sure. Why conduct disorder? Tell me why. Um, because well, we're there. Yes, go ahead. Well, go ahead. some of the yes, yes my, some of the criteria. Well, a few of the criteria 
a few. Conduct. So yeah, on one hand you write down conduct and you write on the criteria beside it. So you are you are beginning to now speculate. Anything yeah. else you anything else you speculate on? Any other disorder that comes to mind? Attachment. Which, what would you think about with attachment? But he was not securely attached, Doctor Mac. Disorder. 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 Oh. Oh. Disorder, allergy, disorder. Aller, allergy says conduct disorder would come to mind, Dr. Mark. Okay, that's one. Okay, somebody's clarifying what, what um, fetal it's alcohol that, oh, syndrome yes, is. That was really you know, can't can't drink alcohol, enters your blood, which is your fetus by crossing the placenta in your development and, the, and it metabolizes and the adult does. But it's more than that. It is where there is structural damage in the brain, which is pretty serious, and it's irreversible. Yes, it can cause blindness. Cognitive. Yes. Cognitive Lots deficit. Of blame. Cognitive. Yes. Yes. So, so we, so we see then from this this major factor, what kind of child this is. Is this a normal he could, child? No. He could also have separation anxiety disorders. To the Tell us why, Miss. Williams. As it Williams. relates to the attachment, the insecure attachment. Okay. Or that, okay, so you can probably write that down. But is this a normal child? No, Doctor. No. So it's not normal. The child is not normal. Let's continue. So the child was adopted by a foster parents. So the Watsons uh so 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 basically um he was adopted at age two years old and lived with them for seven months at age two years and seven months. Am I correct, ladies and gentlemen? We are doing a simple math here. Very, 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 very simple. It's so simple that I can I can sleep over it and wake up and still tell you what it is. Two we years and seven months. months. We got seven months of time. They is living with the Henry, the Watsons for several, several months. Several months. You don't know how many months. Well, well, I'm seven. 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 Parents, Mrs. Watson. What is that telling you? Uh, I was wondering you about know? that. He so you have a child to... staring at you. What would you think? What if a child is staring at you? Uh, you would expect a two-year-old. You would expect a two-year-old to be precocious, all over the place, uh, looking for things and running up and down and laughing. And but a child who is just staring at the and at, 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 at the foster mother. He was uh, probably in a proper case. He was probably a child. He was a child. Well, he was jealous of his adopted sibling. Does that not spell some red flags? So what else? What other disorder would you think about? We are looking at some red flags. I saw where he made that easy. No, 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 no. What other disorder? You're jumping the gun. What other disorders are you? Would you think about? Dr. What Mark, other disorders will sort of mimic or give you an indication that this may be something else? Uh, what other Dr. disorders? Mark, the, really? yes. the steer, the steer and, and, and yes. that interaction with his peers, I might have looked at autism because ah. of the steer. Oh, I need a glass of wine. Uh, something must have said in trauma. Uh, can I take a sip of wine? No, 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 not so early. No, no, no. Uh, Too oh early. Oh God! This, what erudite, what erudite brilliance? Uh, autism. And so while you're speculating, you're going through a series of differential diagnoses. You're saying, okay, this is what I'm coming up with, but something has to be confirmed by a diagnosis. I don't know what the diagnosis is. Let me confirm it. Autism. We don't have Asperger's anymore because it's no longer it's no longer it's an autism spectrum disorder, DSM five. Anything else? Any other disorder? Get angry, scream, and yell. 
when his mother would pay attention to the other child. What is that telling you about this child? Any other disorder now? Somebody said react. Is it Miss Crawford? She said reactive. Dr. Tell Dr. me Dr. why. Dr. Yes. Sorry, Hello Jean is saying that um, oppositional disorder. Ah, I need to go down and get another glass of wine. May I? <laughs> No. Well, Dr. Mark, if I'm distracting no, Dr. Mark, you might be getting uh, one every minute in the doctor. You will, work, you will report me. Um, Rene is saying adjustment disorder, Dr. Mark. Why adjustment? Um, not why, sure adjustment? why is it adjustment, but let me ask her, Dr. Mark. Someone else said opposition or defiant disorder. Why opposition or defiant disorder? Why I'm not here? Why opposition defiant disorder? I'm here, I'm trying to get people to talk to 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 talk. Why opposition defiant? Yes, Doctor Mark. Just give them a minute or to Doctor Mark until okay. um they hear. Let's continue. Yes. He was facing many challenges that would not negative affect his development. Okay. So we have a number of disorders that we are thinking about. So we need yes. to verify hypotheses to make it fact. So we need a diagnosis. We can't treat something that we don't know what you're treating. So hence the diagnosis is going to clarify clinical data. Is it clear? Diagnosis is going to clarify clinical data. So diagnosis. Dr. Mark, is it, at this, is it at this stage that we begin to, 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 to diagnose or just to kind of begin to have some ideas of what we think it might be until we get to the end well, of the case? Well, let us, let us go to the whole case first. Let's go to the case. I'm just saying these are things in your head you should start to have now. You should, as you go through the case, you need to start thinking about what is the possible thing. Okay. What's the hypothesis? And you hypothesize these are the cases, these are the things based upon the data that's available. So okay. you're, getting, you're looking at the data, you're trying to make sense of it, you're quantifying, you're interpreting, and you want to make sense of it in terms of a label. Okay. okay. So Dr. let's Mark. continue. Yes, Mr. Barr. Rene is saying because he found it difficult to adjust to his new situation of having a parent to care for him. Um, Adjustment disorder. Okay. Well, we'll well. Could some could someone keep tab of all the things we talk about that we can go and debunk some and we accept one because one is correct. Not all are correct. But please keep tabs of all the disorders that we come up with, please. Okay. We accept adjustment for now. Could, I don't know. I won't comment. Yes. Dr. Mack, could two could you have could two be correct um based on justification, Dr. Mack? Two be correct? Based on justification. Well if you can prove it then fine. <laughs> then fine. Okay. Dr. And, Mark, will accept? and the proof, Dr. Mack would be in the DSM five. By virtue of the criteria of the DSM five. No, 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 no. The proof would not be the DSM five. What? The proof will be in the in the in the, the proof is going to be the case. The DSM-5 yeah, confirms what you okay, think. All right. Okay, let me rephrase no, 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 no. it. In other words, get sued. let me rephrase you'll get sued. it. Let me no, rephrase no, no, it. No, no. Go ahead. No, no, no. Let me ref no, Dr. Mack, let me rephrase it. Hold on a little bit. Okay. What I'm saying is that by virtue of the DSM-5 and the criteria that are there, the criteria yes. that are there, if we can pick up those criteria in the case, then as, as Robert was saying, and we can verify it, it's verifiable by virtue of the DSM-5 with the... With the with the um with the case, yes. Then we should be able to. That's what I meant. That's what okay. I meant. Well, well, let us see. I don't know. I can't say until I, I look. I look. But Dr. Mack, I want. I want to understand. If if here's the thing though that I want to understand from you. If for instance you give us a case, and you might have an idea of what the answer is in your head, but say for instance we go through and we can say we can pick out four or five of the criteria that is relating to a particular disorder. What 
whatever the disorder is and we can say all of these are present despite the fact that you might have something else in your head would that also go would you be willing to go with that I'm just asking um <laughs> <laughs> No, we are going that. But you, I, 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 I would like people to go to what is called sensible logic. But Dr. Matt, give the credit. Hold no, on. No, Dr. Just, Matt, no, no. Just a moment. Dr. Hold on. If the, if, if in the case, and I'm not, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if in the case of an adjustment disorder, an adjustment disorder is a reaction to an environmental stressor which needs to be resolved in less than six months. Right. This is not going to be resolved. This is a chronic case. So no, I'm not talking about this one, Doctor Mark. I'm just talking about in general now. Oh, you're I'm not talking, talking about this particular case. You're, you're talking, talking about, about in I general. Penalize you if you if, if you do something far if you do something far fetched. That no, I wasn't expecting. You what? No, you won't penalize us if the answer that you had in your head is not the answer that you get. Well, but I, the well, answer that you get can be verified by the DSM-5 diagnostic well, criteria. Well, that's what I'm asking. If you can verify it, if you can verify it in, um, in a very rational and intellectual way, then fine. But, but that might be subjective, just... Dr. Mark. No, no, no. It might be no, no, no. No, no. Cases are not subjective. Cases are objective. The, the information is right there. And the DSM must either confirm it or it doesn't. It's like medicine. That's, that's, it's either there or not. It's not it's, 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 and that's the point I'm making, Dr. Mack, as long as the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria can point to what is in the case, then we should be fine. That's all oh, I'm no. saying. Well, Depending well on... I, I, I wouldn't say, oh, wait. anyway, let's, let's continue. Let's mm -hmm. continue. So can we continue, please, with the case, Mr. Nat, but we can see yes, the yes, case? Yes, Dr. Mack, yes, Dr. Mack. Can, can we continue? Um, next paragraph, please, Mr. Nat. So, so obviously, with this child, um, so okay, so the child, there was another child. He was jealous, screamed. So he, when he got upset, when attention was taken from him to somebody else. So he got very aggressive and violent when his emotional and physical needs were not, um, when he, when they were not met. He would try to kill his family members. He repeated the lied, stole, and hoarded food. Are those other things to think about? Are those other data that, that is important in formulating your diagnosis? Are Most those definitely, other Most definitely. And the okay. violence. Most definitely, Dr. Matt. Yes. Yes. Aggressiveness and the yes. violence. So that is going to give you the background in relation to what has transpired and chances are what will happen yes. going forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. So note in the clinical interview, and we haven't touched on that, but look at what is known as collateral information from the parent. The yeah. parent is saying to you, collateral information, she says he was never an affectionate child. So in her mind, since he was adopted at age two, he was never, she didn't show affection in the family. He tried to bond with him by hugging him, but he resisted her advances. So we're looking then at, so he's resisting that touch, uh, the, her advances. So we are looking at insecure, ambivalent um, uh, 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 attachment in terms of Ainsworth's, you remember Ainsworth's strange situation? So there was an attachment issue here. Oh. Uh, he had some idiosyncrasies such as sitting in the bathtub, but hates to brush his teeth, combing his hair. So somebody talked about autism. That could be one. That could be one other again other, one other diagnosis to think about. Says YouTube is breaking up, Doctor uh, Mr. Name. I understand that you is he there? Yes, I'm here. I'm hearing that YouTube is breaking up. They're not hearing. I am. I am not sure. Some people are experiencing um, buffering. In, um, the YouTube is buffering, but I'm not sure what's happening. Oh dear. Um, I, I, I don't. I'm hoping that they can um, 
tune in. But 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 so look at so look so, so okay so so look I'm at sorry, the, so look. Did you look at? I'm sorry, Doctor Matt. Did you look at um paragraph three that he was angry and belligerent? And yes. He was no, I mean, okay. So he was okay. angry and, and he was corrected. He ran away from home for two days. So. I can see where people talk about the, the conduct problems with that, that that's concerned. So we take that into consideration. So they they want to look for him. They was able to locate him in a fetal position, sucking his thumb on the street. So we are looking then at some regression with this young man. So basically, then his hypervigilance increases. He show disturbances and hypervigilance to loud noises. So we are looking then. At we are, we, are, we are possibly looking at a number of, of formulations that's creating and providing the clinical data that will pro provide a category or a dimension of behavior, of behavioral phenomena with this young man. And um, Dr. Mackey also threatened to kill his family members. Did we see that one? Yes, that, I saw that. Okay. Um, the case is gone, where is it? Oh my God! He, he lied. Yes, the case. He stole and he ordered food. Yes. The case is gone. He's gone. He's gone. Right. Oh um, my. Oh my goodness. He's gone. Not to worry, said Doctor Mark. Um, All right. Um. Basically, but okay, Doctor Mark, we, we, hold on, we have the information. Um, yes. We, if you continue to to teach Doctor Mark, I'm not sure that YouTube will be able to see and hear. It happened to us the last time. It's live. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's live. It's not. Um. It's not. It's not off air. It's live. So we we will teach because it's still live. I'm okay, not certain. It, he's back. Okay. Um. So so let's quickly. We don't need to go any further with the case. We what what do you think? No. What what do you think? Based upon what you have seen so far, what's the diagnosis? What do you think the diagnosis is? We have the evidence. Is it is it a conduct disorder? Is it autism? Is it oppositional defiant disorder? Is it reactive attachment disorder? What is this? What is it? What is it? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Obsessive what? What was that? Compulsive disorder. <laughs> Where did that come from? No. Two G five DSM. Okay, but where did that come from? Where's the evidence in the beginning? The conduct, the everything put together. Okay, yeah. what tell me tell me why okay, let's let, let me let me go to the process of elimination. Go ahead. Why would it not be adjustment disorder? Somebody, do you all have your DSM fours in front six. of you? Do you? Yes, ma'am, up to six months. Okay. And this is a life Someone read the criteria for diagnostic this uh, for adjustment disorder, please. Could somebody do you have, if you have a DSM? Could someone find uh, opposition defined? Someone find conduct disorder and someone find reactive attack. Let, let us look and make a comparison. We want to get out this case pretty quickly. Yeah, Victor is proposing that it's conduct disorder. Why would it be conduct disorder? Could someone read it? Could, could someone read who has a DSM in front of you for the nine right. people? Reactive, reactive Just a moment. No, no, disorder. No, 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 no. Let me read the Could conduct someone disorder. Read, I'm going to read, Dr. Read, Mark. I'm going to read. I'm yes, read. read the cri diagnostic criteria, please. Oh, look at the vignette and let's look and let's eliminate, do the process of elimination. All right, so I'm going to read conduct disorder. Conduct disorder. Yes. A repetitive, and this is DSM-5, a repetitive and persistent pattern of behavior in which the basic rights of others or major age appropriate societal norms or rules stop it right are there. Stop, stop, stop it, stop it, stop it. Is there any evidence to be near about, about any violation of people's rights? No. no it's, it's not a conduct disorder. It can't, it's impossible. What's the main driving force in behavior? Attachment. 
Attachment. It cannot be conduct. Continue, Mr. Williams. Okay. Um, as manifested by the presence of at least three of the following 15 criteria in the past 12 months from any of the categories below, which with at least one criterion present in the past six months. Aggression to people and animals, and this can include bullies and bullying and threatening or intimidating others, um, physical fights, um, cruelty to animals and people, and stealing, sexual activity, forced someone into sexual activity, that's one category, destruction of property, and we all know what that is, okay, we'll deceitfulness. Stop all right, okay. she can stop, we can stop. The main criteria, in, you need to look for main the criteria in this case what we are seeing in this video is attachment we are seeing behavioral disturbances of attachment and the child is feeling needs are not met so running away means that the child felt that he was not loved the child felt a sense of uh, uh, um, loneliness so there is no really evidence that a conduct disorder the main criteria is a direct violation of norms yes in this case the air is aggression but it's aggression because of the child's frustration in the in in trying to navigate the environment due to a major risk factor it has nothing to do with conduct child okay. has not violated any norms it's not a conduct disorder autism okay. can someone okay. who has a dsm read the criteria for autism please we know that in the veneer there was gazing, was doing stereotypic behaviors. Let us look to see. Most disorders, every dis let me say this before you, before we say this. Listen carefully. Every disorder of childhood. So the more the more mild it is, each one superimposes on each other. So for example, conduct will have aggression, will have a reactive attachment disorder. A child who may have anxiety may also have a uh, um, child may also have uh, attachment problems, as in case of a separation anxiety. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the child has an attachment problem. So the key comp the key component in a, in separation is there is a, a stressor that has upsetted the stability of the family dynamic. The child has undergone a trauma. That's it. So let's look at the case. In this case, what is jumping out at you? You see attachment. What else do you see? You see behavioral aggression. What else do you see? You see what? What else do you see? What else do you see? What else is jumping out at you? You see hypervigilance. What else do you see? What else do you see, ladies and gentlemen? You see emotional problems. Emotional issues. Where is that? Tell me where you see that. What's um, implied in the vineyard? How do you know there is emotional problems in there? The jealousy of your brother. Um, That's an emotional problem. Children are jealous of each other. Why would that be an emotional problem? It's a severity of it, I guess. The child running away. And no, often getting angry. That's an emotional problem, running away. He's getting he angry. Away when I'm sorry? He would often get angry and scream and yell at his mother. Um, wouldn't that be considered an emotional problem? Are there any evidence of emotional problems in the vineyard? Yes, there may be, but why do you say so? You have to justify why you say that. What is it that suggests to you that he has emotional problems? You're stuck in his stone. That doesn't prove emotional problems. Dr. Mark, wouldn't you consider he getting angry? He's, the vineyard says that he, he would often get angry. And stream that doesn't also prove emotional problems. Children get angry when their needs are not met. What in the vineyard, I want you to tell me what in the vineyard suggests to you that the child has emotional problems. If you're in court and they ask you to tell you these things and you go and you go for a subpoena with a lawyer and they tell you that ask you 
Now ask your question. Tell me the, what. Give us the evidence. What tells you that there's emotional problems? I don't want to want to be this case too much. Doctor Mark. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yes. The case indicated that he had a poor maternal care, uh, where his mother was concerned. So that could. Um, indicate emotional problem and the abandonment of parent also, Dr. Matt. Also, oh, okay. Dr. Matt, yes. Mm -hmm. um, you, you said in a lecture that a child needs, I, can't remember, I don't have the notes of you now, but you said that a child needs consistent, um, um, consistent, no, consistent, you said that a child needs four or five things. For, for a health development. And we are seeing where, where those are not met in this DNA. What's not, met, that, in the, what's not met in the case? What is not met? You, you. He needs predictability. Mm -hmm. Prior to the yes, other child, he didn't have predictability. You cannot be careful about throwing out things or you cannot prove it. You can't make the evidence. I, I know what you're talking sure. about. Tell me what in the vineyard suggests that the child has emotional problems. Um, Dr. Mark, let me try. Let me try. Um, further on, it says that aside from his fighting and so on, he doesn't have any friends and prefer to remain in his darkened room, often with the curtains closed, and was often manipulated and showed no remorse. Mm -hmm. so that is, is an emotional issue. And okay, he showed but, disturbance. But, 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 and he showed this. And he showed disturbances and hypervigilance to load noise. Okay, but that's, that's, not, that's, 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 that's not part of the fetal alcohol syndrome. That has something to do with emotion. Okay, okay. Insecure, it's insecure home and right. the emotional, emotional environment yeah. in relation to his foster, his foster Could home. Could the fact that he was never affectionate indicate that he had an emotional problem? That's an attachment issue. Does no hold uh, an attachment. Okay. Emotions are not okay. It's not ex let, me, let me because I don't want to keep this case too long. I need to get onto something else. Let, let's let's look at this. You are correct. The problem I have with students I'm concerned about is that students are not able to use powers of reasoning to, to hypothesize and form it. What you're doing is that you're formating the case. But you, what you need to do is look, there are evidence here that the fact that there is emotions. What key words would suggest? If he's screaming, if he's, if, he's, um, if he's acting out and behaving in a way, that shows that the child's emotions are disturbed. So mm -hmm. you, 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 don't meet, you don't tell me something with something else. You look at the vignette. It may not be implied, but you begin to use your case formulation skills and look at key concepts to say, okay, there is, it's implied here that there's emotional issues. So with an alcohol, so what's driving the, the, the emotions, the fetal alcohol syndrome? Yes, I agree it does have emotional issues. I agree, but I am not hearing what people tell me what it is. You have to look at the vineyard, imply what it is, and say what you think it is. That has to take, well, it takes a lot of skill over years, but you need to start developing now so, so able so to Dr. Extrapolate Mark, out us, of it. All right, Dr. Max, so help us then. Help us help us here. So if it is that everything that we have said would not be the emotional issue, when we are going to yes. be looking for emotional um issues, what do we look for? As you, you said, are going to look we look at, at the screaming, we look at the yelling, key in the features of behavior. So it's in it's in words one, angry. Screaming and yelling are emotions. It's not what oh, it is. It's pretty right. simple, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty simple. I'm not expecting you to go on and come up with a a a, a, a tristis on psychological massage. That takes you to practice. I'm talking about looking at the data and come up with what you think it is. There is emotions, but don't tell me that because of his mother. That's nothing to do with it. Okay. That has you have no evidence. Where's the evidence there? Screaming and yelling are emotions. So the okay. child has emotional issues. Okay. He's immature. Basically, that's what it is. So let's go back to autism quickly. Could somebody read the diagnosis? A comment from Hailene. I posted a comment from Hailene. Oh, okay, let me see that. Where is it? You are on guard. 
Okay. I'm not certain what she means by that, but um, tell her to clarify what she, could you clarify what you mean? She said that that is the evidence of the She's saying that's an evidence of emotional problem. No, that's not an evidence of emotions at all. No, that's hypervigilance. That's more, that's more part of the fetal of, 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 of an attachment issue. Angry, scream, and yell are emotion. Those are the key. Look for look for look for go, symptoms. Look so look for emotional problems. Is the child is it affecting the child? The child cannot. Be, it's it affecting the child that the child poses. There is distress for the child. In this case, he's screaming. He's angry. He's, he's not able to control himself. That's the emotions there. So can somebody read the criteria for autism? Okay, Dr. Mark, reading, reading, reading. Go ahead, please, quickly. From many. Autism spectrum disorder. Persistent deficiency in social communication and social interaction across multiple contexts, as manifested by the following. Currently, as manifested by the following, currently or by history. Examples are illustrative and they are not exhaustive. So, one. Deficit in social emotional reciprocity, ranging from ranging, for example, from abnormal social approach and failure of normal back and forth conversation. Stop it right there. Stop it. I'm sorry to interrupt like that so abruptly. That's okay. Doctor. Can I infer that one of the criteria in autism fits the criteria? Can you see that? Is the child interacting very well in the environment? No, no. But what is what? So let's continue to determine why it may not be autism. Continue. To reduce look share. Yeah. Look. Sorry. Go to the DSM to make sure it aligns with what you see in the vignette. Not what the DSM says. The DSM can have a. It's a whole template for a number of 300 disorders in the in in um in the DSM. You must go to the case. The case must verify what the, the DSM must confirm what your hypothesis says. It's you who's doing it. You have to be objective from what you see and what you hear and symptoms and signs. Not what the DSM it's not the I've never heard of a horse dragging the horse. It doesn't work. The horse must drag the horse. Am I correct? You're very correct, Dr. Matt. That's what we that's what we understood from another class. That, that is how it works. But we just want to ensure that we're on the same page with you, Dr. Matt. So we are we are good. <laughs> okay. Continue. Continue now. Okay. Okay. So to re to reduce okay. To reduce sharing of interests, emotions or affect, to failure to initiate or respond to social interactions. Okay, that's stop it right there. Um, do you see, go back and read generally what autism is please, the spectrum disorders. Read it again, Dr. Mark. So go, back and, go back and read generally what autism is in the DSM. I don't have it in front of me. So read what autism is. Deficit in social communication and social interaction in a number of contexts. Okay, so can let me ask a question. Can I has Justin been able to talk? Yes. Yeah. So is so if it's so if he can speak, is it autism? Yes. Well, no. is it autism? Well, it's not. Well, it's not. Well, they need to just stop. We we're wasting time. <laughs> let's it's go back autism. to adjustment. Let's, let's go to adjustment. Yeah, no, can someone find the criteria for just? Adjustment disorder. We're going by what people say. Let's look for adjustment disorders. Adjustment. Can someone look it up for me, please? And as you're noticing, I wanted to note the codes that when you are reading off, you can have it from your head. Adjustment disorders. Read the criteria, the please. The development of emotional or behavioral symptoms in response to an identifiable stressor or stressors occurring within three months of the onset of the stressors. These symptoms or behaviors are clinically significant 
as evidenced by one or both of the following. Marked distress that is out of proportion to the severity or intensity of the stressor, taking into account the external context and the cultural factors that might influence symptom severity and presentation. Two, significant impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. C, the stress-related disturbance does not meet the criteria for another mental disorder. Stop it there. And we have to stop. Stop it. Sorry to again be abrupt. Do we have evidence of anything there like that? Adjustment disorder is a mild no. disorder of adjustment. Again, we are looking at acuity versus chronicity. In this case, when a case is chronic, it is not an adjustment disorder. Let us forget about that one. It's out. Okay, it can't be adjustment. It is an acuity. It's going to be once it's resolved, once the stressor is resolved, loss of a job, uh, loss of divorce, <laughs> then mm -hmm. it's no longer is an adjustment disorder. It's something else. Someone that says oppositional defiant disorder. Let's go to that, please, quickly. Someone find it. OK, so someone is, and then Someone look up reactive for me, please, and then we are going to be trying to wrap up this case. And 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 um. Oppositional defiant. Yes. A pattern of angry or irritable move, mood, argumentative mm -hmm. slash defiant behavior, or vindictiveness, lasting at least six months, as evidenced by Stop at least right four Stop right there. Of any of the Stop it right there. Is there any okay? We see little snippets. We see superimposition yes. of symptoms in oppositional defiant disorder that can and say yes. But what is defining disorder? What is yes. the defining concept of disorder? Vindictiveness, six months or less. This child has this problem for how long, ladies and gentlemen? Come from this child, time of onset for how long? Seven, seven years. Seven years. Seven years. It cannot seven years. Be. Continue, Ms. Crawford. Let's continue before we throw All the baby right. with the For symptoms, the following categories and exhibited during interaction with that individual who is sick. Okay. Do we have. This is a bit. Justin had a behavioral problem. A child with an oppositional defiant disorder has a behavioral problem. What, what is the defining feature that a child with a child with oppositional defiant disorder, the ch the behavior, the behavioral manifestation is normal. In the case of Justin, is acting out because of a severe risk factor. Is there the evidence of a risk factor with an oppositional defiant disorder child? No. The child is acting out because of behavioral problems, because of a lot of things child, children act out. But in an oppositional defiant, do you see any evidence of this case in this case? Even if you see it, it's not enough criteria to make a full diagnosis. It is far too severe. Opposition of defiant disorder in a child is acute. Children act out, and if once the problem is solved, they, they, it's fixed. Is there any evidence for that in the beginning? Even though the symptoms seem similar, but is there any evidence? What are we seeing coming up with, with this case? That this child mm -hmm. has acting out, this child is, is, is attachment problems, this child is... is um, there are issues with with um, with developmental delays. Opposition defiant disorder does not bring that, so we'll throw it out. Let us now look at reactive attachment disorder. Can someone find it? Read it and let us go to I diagnosis. A consistent inhibited emotional. A Stop it. No, hold on. Read it. I'm sorry, you're breaking up. A consistent Con pattern. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Sorry. Slowly for me. Uh, 
I'm because I'm trying. It's like music to my ears, and I'm trying to deal with the melody. <laughs> I'm clicking my head. So if you if you if you have what I call a cacophony of uh, oh, musical then pattern. No, no, hold on. Could continue clearly. I'm not hearing. I Read very clearly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A consistent inhibited emotionally withdrawn behavior. Stop it there. Does it there evidence evidence? Manifested mm -hmm. above. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Manifested by both of the following. The child rarely or minimally seeks comfort when distressed. Stop it there. The it's child there rarely the or minimally. Hold on, hold on, Miss, 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 Miss Mitchell. Hold on. Is there any evidence in the beginning? Child really seeks comfort. Is there any evidence in the beginning? Yes, Dr. Mark. Continue, please. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. The child rarely or minimally responds comfort when distressed. Is there are there any evidences in the beginning of that? A persistent. Yes, okay. A persistent yes. what? Go ahead. Go ahead. A persistent social emotional disturbance characterized by at least two of the following. Social and emotional responsiveness to others. Is there any evidence? Limited in the positive. Hold on, hold on. Is affect. there any evidence in the vineyard? Are there any evidence in the vineyard? Yes, there is. Okay, we don't need to go any further. It's an attachment, this one. Now we need to look, we need to specify what type of attachment disorder it is. So look in the in the DSM on the trauma and somatic this and tell me what type of attachment disorder this child is going on with. Can somebody do that for me? Because time is going, please. Type of attachment disorder. Can somebody tell me what type the specifier for the attachment disorder? Reactive. That's for the specifier. What type of what type of a dot? What type it is? The category is reactive attachment disorder. What's the specifier? The specifier? Mm -hmm. You did this course last year with whoever, not with me or somebody, but you should know what the specific. What is the type of attachment it is? I want to know the type of attachment. See the DSM. What type is it? That's going to be your homework. <laughs> That's going to be your homework. Right, me. Okay, um, so. Somatic so, stress or something like that? No, 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 no. No, I talked about specifiers in the DSM. This is why I said people need to. Do this course, the DSM psychopathology first before you do this course. Reactive disorder has special specific types. Only two. Or specifiers. I'm only seeing two here. Yes. Okay, tell me what they are, please. Hold on. I'm only seeing two, so I'm not really sure. This is reactive, reactive attachment disorder, right? And it says one specified it says specified persistent. The other has been first been present for more than twelve months. And then the other one says specified current 
severity. Reactive attachment disorder is specified as severe when a child exhibits all symptoms of this order with each symptom manifesting the ability to have a good. The only one is specified as for reactive um I'm not seeing anything. Are there any specifiers? Are there any specifiers? For reactive attachment is animal for this? Mm -hmm. But Dr. Mann, I don't see, I'm not seeing where in reactive attachment it says, because the, um, Justin threatened to kill his family. Forget about what Justin he said. Lied. I'm talking about what the DSM-5 says. Forget about what Justin says. The DSM-5 has a specifier, or has types and specifier. Just like a major depressive disorder, you can have major disorder, single episode, severe, recurrent, mild, moderate, or severe. I'm asking you to go back and okay. Let's let us not be able that right now. Let let us. But Doctor, uh, can you explain how he has no. criteria for reactive? I didn't hear you. It, it just was read. I'm wondering if you could explain, go through how he has met the criteria. What do, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Why would it not be an adjust? A re, why would it not be? Why would it not be a reactive attachment disorder? What's your concern? Because I'm. I wrote down what right based on the, the, the based on what is presented in the case. I am not seeing the connection. Why would you not see the connection? What are the what are the indicators in the vini that would suggest and lean to a reactive disorder? Okay. Could someone read Miss Williams? Miss Williams, Ms. Williams could you yes, read? Yeah, you you are. Could you? Read, you are very clear. Could you go back, please? Yeah. Read the criteria for adjustment disorder, please. Sometimes I'm going to stop you and. To, to make it clear and to go back to the vineyard to clarify. Go back and read it again, please. Okay. Um, reactive. Miss Williams, go ahead. Reading Dr. Mark, reading Dr. Mark. Yes. A consistent pattern of indicated emotionally withdrawn. Read the description. Well, first of all, sorry. Read the description of read the description of reactive attachment disorder, please. Okay. Well, what it says. What what does it mean? I'm actually Go ahead. reading. Go ahead. Um, you mean read from the top? From one special nation disorder? Um, uh, I'm reading the back of the That's what you want to no, read. No, 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 no. Okay. Go ahead and read the diagnostic features. That may be more clear there. Go ahead and read it, please. A consistent Go ahead, pattern, I'm reading that one. Consistent pattern of inhibited, emotionally withdrawn behavior towards adult caregivers manifested by both of the following. The child rarely or minimally seeks comfort when distressed. Stop the it, child. Is there any evidence in the video? Hold on. Is there any evidence in the video? Yes, Ladies and gentlemen, is there any evidence in the video? Yes, Dr. Mark. Yes, Dr. Mark. Okay. Yes. Continue, continue, Ms. Williams. Child rarely or minimally responds to comfort when distressed. Mm -hmm. Is there any evidence in the venue? Yes, Dr. Mark. Facts, so hypotheses are becoming facts yes, by the DSM-5. Very clear. Is there is evidence. No speculation. Evidence. Yes. Clear. Go ahead. Yes. One, one question before we go on, Um, I'm looking at the section where it says diagnostic features, and it is saying that children with reactive attachment disorder are believed to, are believed to have the capacity to, to, to form selective attachment. But well, I'm looking at this case in that he has a uh, a developmental disorder from the fetal alcohol syndrome. Can we say from that disorder that that intellectual disorder um, that he has from birth 
that he yes, has what? the capacity that he has, you saw the fetal, the fetal, the alcohol fetal syndrome that he has, right? Um, can we say that he has the capacity to form um, attachments? Do you, what do you think? Wrong? Do you think he has, he, okay, this is what the DSM says, but that, that's a probability. It doesn't say all children do that. In this, in Justin's case, does he have the capacity to form uh, attachments? Do you see that in the video? Hello? I'm, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm doubting that he really has the capacity to form attachment. I think what is happening to him outside of the, or in addition to the fact that he has problems with the social environment, with, with, with his um, mother leaving him and so on and so forth, and the change of, of of homes. I'm also looking at a mental problem. I'm looking at a problem, a physiological problem, in addition to a psychological problem. That I'm may wondering be true. if he has the capacity to form well, attachment. You, you, of his you, answer, you, are, you tell me if, if he does. does. Does this young man have the capacity to form uh, uh, disorders? Because this reactive attachment disorders is going to later on translate into schizoid personality disorder. You see, the, you see that's a likelihood of, of, of a disorder of the personality. That's what is happening. That's the risk for a personality disorder later on. You are going to have schizoid disorders. The question is, and you have to answer the question, does he have the capacity to form a, a, a behavior? Does he have that capacity? Based on the fact that he has a fetal alcohol syndrome, no, I don't think he has a capacity. Okay. Maybe Anybody, one else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Mm -hmm. My goodness, students are not. I, I don't understand. Are, mm. are you tired? Hello? Um, Dr. McKellar Jean is saying she believes that the specifier is severe as he exhibits all the symptoms of the disorder. Tell her she's correct. She needs a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> well done, hello, Jean. I can't get students to, I, I don't know if it's... Dr. Max. Dr. It's Max. It's for me and I'm still, and I'm alert. I'm very Dr. much alert. Dr. The course. Dr. 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 Max. I, I'm not sure if I'm teaching, and maybe I'm talking rubbish. I don't know. Dr. Dr. Students Max. are not responding. Yes, Dr. Mr. Mark. Uh, for Go two ahead. reasons, Dr. Mac. One, you're enjoying your wine, so you're still up. And the second doctor mark is that our mics are actually on mute. It takes a while to actually go and uh, unmute them. All right. All right. Apologies. Uh, but I'm a bit anxious. Are you understanding basically what this case is about? Do you see why that throughout all the case, it's attachment problems? Definitely. Attachment is the issue. And, they, and not only attachment, you're seeing that they, that they are, that they the, the attachment itself, in other words, the reactive attachment has similarities of autism, but it's not quite autism. It has similarities of conduct, but it's not quite conduct. It has some problems with the population of the sign, but it's, the, it, the criteria is not enough to give it a full-fledged diagnosis. You see that. Everything is in it. So, Dr. The Mark, the more, the more yeah. severe, hold on, the more severe the, the, the behavior, so every disorder superimposes each other. They build on each other. So you move from position defined to conduct, then conduct to to antisocial. In this case, reactive attachment to possibly schizoid personality disorder. In the, currently, he's going to have issues for the rest of his life. Um, Doctor Mark, mm -hmm. I post a comment from Renee. I see he be, he has a capacity to to form attachment. That's what she's re responding to. I have to understand why it's an attachment problem. Okay. All right. So so it's an attach. So it's a reactive attachment disorders, and because it's a reactive attachment disorders, it's this is a very difficult disorder to treat. So so. So we should be thinking then, what treatment can we treat? How can we work with this child? Can we do therapy with a child like this? Can we do therapy with a child? What what more what behavioral what behavioral uh, what uh, I, I'm giving the answer. I think I'm 
interesting your moment. What treatment intervention we can use with this child? Behavior modification. Okay, probably. CBT. CBT. Who said CBT and why? We have to think. Why CBT? CBT. Why CBT has to because um of the behavioral modification techniques. And how is this young man going to understand CBT when he's he can't even sit still to understand? Do you think he's capable of? Do you think he has the capacity to understand CBT? Well, it will be age appropriate CBT. For example, um, somebody will talk here. Dr. Uh, can I ask a question, please, before you move to treatment? Just a quick question. Okay. Yes. Um, Dr. Mack, I'm looking at, at reactive attachment disorder, and I noticed that we only yeah. got to A, which is 1 and 2, to determine. Okay, go ahead, on, go ahead on what, okay, go ahead on, my apologies. I was in my effusiveness. I, uh, of, uh, okay, thanks, Michelle. Of, of, um, of, of drinking wine, and, and, and I um, omitted to. Continue. Go ahead, please. But 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 where in the case does it say that she? Well, I guess. May I ask a question, please? Go May ahead. I ask? We need to continue. That you can go on to add something else, please. Let's continue. Go ahead and read, Miss Miss uh, Miss Williams. The question I'm asking, Doctor Mark, because that, that, that well, the question I'm asking. We have a whole list of criteria here, and generally. When we were doing personality disorder, because that's the only set of, of, of um, disorders that I am aware of, but that I know of and how to diagnose. Um, it would say after the first, if they have three of what or four of what, X, Y, and Z. Now we're looking at reactive attachment disorder, and after the first two that we are, we have seen here, that would say that we are seeing in the case that we'll be using to say when this is reactive attachment disorder. <laughs> But um, what, the what, first okay, let's, let's just just to satisfy you. Let's just to satisfy your your your. Let me tell you why I'm. Let me tell you why I'm saying Just to no, satisfy no, no, your you spirit of curiosity. No, Go ahead. Let yeah. Let me tell you why I'm asking. Come, my brain is not just here, you know. My brain is all the way over to exam, and uh, everything else that uh, comes with it. And so uh -huh. what I'm saying is that um. Some of these disorders, we're not going to know them right off the bat, and we can't study them. So when it comes to the four, when we are doing a case and we look at it, and I'm talking for myself, I can't talk for anybody else. Um, when you're looking at the case, you you we might think of conduct disorder and all the other things that would jump immediate, immediately to us. Now I'm saying, is it okay then for you to say, after looking at the first two, because we don't reach any further yet, you know, after looking at the first two to decide right. that reactive right. attachment disorder is the you disorder you of don't choice. Need to go any, but you don't need to go any further because it's, it, it exactly clarifies what is in the case. So basically you're saying that if we can find at least one or two of the, if the first two criteria we can find in the case, even though we might be able to find four or five of another disorder, the first two that we can identify in the case, from a particular disorder that well, will make the disorder, the put, disorder. It, put, it, put, it, put it this way it takes consummate skill that I have to determine what and we is. don't have that consummate skill Dr. Max so we are saying so we're trying to find out from you how to, no. to, 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 to at least from our little level no. our low level to try and understand it from this little baby level that we are at so we can at least so that we can at least give you Yes, you, Dr. Matt, but you are at a consummate level. Yes. Well, but you are at yes. a level, Dr. Matt, that we are not at. And so no, 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 <laughs> oh my goodness! Look, don't you know? Don't you, you worry too much. You you need to be able, as I said before, the key is to look at the case, 
Look at the key things that are keeps jumping back at you. And so once you, the good thing to, as I told you before, is to look at some certain concepts, attachment, hypervigilance. Those are key clinical indicators. Uh, hypervigilance, um, aggression. So you look at what are the possible uh, plausible hypotheses, I mean diagnosis that could that could come under certain of, of these key indicators. And so once you begin to form your formula differential diagnosis, one is has to be correct. One can all of them can be uh, correct. That's, that, that's important. And, and one is come, correct. I know, but you see here's the problem though. When you learn how to one do it correct. one way, when you learn how to do it one way and then you you are in another in another scenario when you what are kind of trying to figure out what, what it no, is. No, no, no. But what? In, that's in other way. words, in a, in, well, in our fairness, thing, we didn't say it didn't tell you that if you have um, three or four of this criteria, then this is the, this order that you have. But I'm thinking that if we should go through all of these A, B, C, and D, and E and F and G. Um, but if you, but if you, yeah, but I know. But but I don't have a cut you. But if you if you go to the uh the, um for example if you go to reactive attachment disorders and you go to a I expect you to also continue with A C B and D because it, it, logically it follows if you start with A B and C and you see they, they all lined up okay for for argument's sake let's go to C the so you're saying to me that, I'm, that all of these criteria would be in yes. this case of course okay let's let's go yeah, to C go to the criteria because I'm not seeing them. Let's go to C. Let's go to C. Okay. C. Let's go to C. Read C. We did we do B? Go ahead. Yes, let me, we did let me do B. We did go no, back we need to B. B. Go ahead. A persistent social I'm going. A persistent social and emotional disturbance characterized by at least two of the following. Minimal social and emotional responsiveness to others. Ah, yes. Limited positive okay. affect, yes. Episodes of unexplained irritability, sadness, or fearfulness that are evident even during non threatening interactions with adult caregivers. Ah. Yes. Go ahead. The, the child has experienced a pattern of extreme of insufficient care, as is evidenced by at least one of the following ah. social neglect or deprivation. Ah. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Our Dr. Oh, Mas, you need any more evidence? Do we need any more evidence, Miss Williams? No, no, Dr. Mark. But you have to be you to you, you have to you know you have to learn to go on a limb to have your 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 um your legs slouched off. No, Dr. Mark. Fall, fall off the edge. Not with you, you Dr. Mark. You have Mac, to Mac, learn to leg. trust your your, no, your your instinct. No, Dr. Mac, can we go on a limb with you? I need to find out which tree I'm going on before I can go on any limb. You have to <laughs> Learn to trust yourself. I understand that. What is there? It's surprise. I, I, you saw see me drink. Look at my wife. It's almost gone, and I'm getting drunk. I understand it's, that Elogene has a comment. Elogene okay. has a comment, Dr. Mark. She says CBT coined with play therapy because he has a mental disorder caused from um, FAS. Mm -hmm. And behavioral disorder, which is caused from his abandonment issues. Yes. Play therapy would help Justin express himself better due to some of the creative techniques it has. Wonderful. But to ex uh, tell her, well, could you explain? Oh, Miss Croft, is it Miss Crawford who is or Hello Jean? Who is who wrote this? Hello Jean. Hello Jean. Um, well, I can say the comment from Hello Jean. Okay. Well, she's. Elodie, you have to explain why CBT, particularly when he has issues, cognitive development, or the, the problems. Explain CBT. All right, we we we're gonna have to jump off this. I mean, I think we basically have the have have the case. We know what okay. it is. I've, I've, we have stretched it for an hour, and I don't I don't know what else to do. Okay. Let me just wrap up the task and processes, please. Let's wrap it up now, and then I want to go a little bit on treatment for this case. The fourth. Tasks and processes are fourth after diagnosis is specify outcome goals in the form of a treatment plan. What is this, Dr. Max? Sorry, um, I'm on. This is I'm still on task and processes of case conceptualization. I'm continuing. 
So this is after the, the four domains. This is after the four domains? This is after the four domain categories? What? No, we were no hold on. We were on the tasks mm -hmm. and processes. Domains mm -hmm. under the, the domains is diagnosis. The fourth task is specified outcome goals in the form of a treatment plan. All right. On the domain, look at, we, had, we, had four, we had four main domains on the diagnosis. The fourth now is specified outcome goals in the form of a treatment plan. Um, Dr. Mack, if you don't mind, can you say the other, what the other three were, please? Let me see if I can find them in this notes. Gather clinical data, define the presenting problem, three, provide a diagnosis, and wow. four now, and I said provide a diagnosis means that you have, there are four domains. Under diagnosis is emotional problems, two, conduct problems, three, developmental delays, for relationship difficulties. So one is gathering data, two is presenting problems? Yes. What is two, what is two presenting problems? Yes. Three is diagnosis. Three is four, specify outcome goals in the form of a treatment. Uh, I beg your pardon? What is three? You said that I said one three was provide a diagnosis. Okay. I need to wrap this up. Let's let's wrap this up. I need to I need to move on from this. I'm beginning to get a bit bored, to be honest. Um, you can't be bored, Dr. Mac. We need to understand. Hi, <laughs> boy. I'm specifying what, Dr. Mac? Okay, okay. I don't know why children are confused. This was the heading: task and processes of case conceptualization. And we had gathered clinical data, we had defined the presenting problem, and we had provide a diagnosis. I spent an hour and a half with the case. All right, Dr. Uh, Mack, um, I'm sorry, I wasn't in that. No, Dr. Mack, we were on YouTube. I was on YouTube for this. You I missed let, let me go back over again, please. I said on the provider diagnosis, A is uh, there are four da um, domains on the providing a diagnosis. There are four, and I said, I said there are four types. You'll find four of these domains in a case, no, general case. We have that. We have that. That okay. was tonight. I'm, I'm, what I wasn't such clear on were the other three, which you would have spoken about when we were in YouTube. So I was just wanting to get some Okay, clarity. I'm now on four, which is specify right. outcome goals in the form of a treatment plan. That's four. Specify outcome goals in the form of a treatment plan. In other words, we're going to be learning about a treatment plan. We are learning about treatment approaches, but, I, but you also talk about goals from the diagnosis in the form of a treatment plan. Five, okay. apply hypotheses. I'm just going to talk about, I'm going to just list them right now. Apply hypotheses. And the question is, is the problem social, biological? Is the problem social, biological, developmental, family, systems, etc.? Apply hypotheses. Is the problem social, biological, developmental, family systems? Six is plan treatment for prognosis and outcome. You're going to plan treatment. In other words, you determine whether or not this child's prognosis is guarded. So there are, there are several types of prognosis. And maybe I need to clarify this. There are several types of prognosis <laughs> under this six. That's not plan yes. treatment for prognosis or what? An outcome. An outcome and yes, prognosis on the sixth. Okay, she's answered it about about CBT. Despite his deficiencies, things can be broken down for him to understand in order to change the way he thinks and behaves. Sorry for the delay, guys, but there's a delay feeding. Tell her that. Thank you very much. Yes, 
Good. So you, we can use CBT. I just want to understand you understand what you, what you need to do with where he's concerned. Thank you. Okay, I'm just talking about prognosis. That prognosis is based upon um is defined as I'm I'm defining what prognosis is. Prognosis is determining the efficacy of the client's ability to get better. Prognosis is the efficacy of determining the child's ability to get better. Prognosis. The efficacy of determining the child's ability to get better. It can be poor, guarded, poor, guarded, good, excellent. Poor, guarded, good, excellent. For guard, you, you don't know. So you're not, you won't say anything. Guard means that you don't really know. You're not certain. Poor means no, can't happen. <clears throat> so treatment is normally tailored. I'm under six still. Treatment is normally tailored to prognosis. Treatment is normally tailored to prognosis. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm on seven. Number seven, please. Monitor effects of interventions. Monitor effects of interventions. And lastly, eight. Termination of the case. You don't keep the case forever. You terminate. Termination of case. Termination of case. So that's it for tasks and processes. So in the case of uh, Justin, people said they'll use, what other approach would you use for Justin? What would you, what would you, how would you treat him? How would you treat Justin? Um, I don't know if, if you had heard that psychoeducation with the parents. Um, to Why inform them of Why so psychoeducation? Educate, All right. So that you could educate and about what is some of the strategies that they can use along with the therapy to help him with his problems. Okay. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? We're just simple treatment, nothing, we're just simple. What would you be thinking about helping this child? Is he helpable? Can he be helped? Yeah. Unmute your mics, please, that you can speak. So, therapy. Why play therapy? What's the reason for that, please? Uh, not hearing. Play and therapy. What 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 about play therapy? It's at Justin's level. Okay. Yeah. Explain. Explain what do you mean by his level? I don't understand. I mean I do, but I want other people people may have questions. What do you mean by his level? Um I think in Justin's case, he um regarding the alcohol, the syndrome, he has this problem I mean brain problem so with playing he can you know so he can he can be helped <coughs> at his level. Hello? you have not explained what play therapy you have you still have to explain what you, what play therapy is why why use play when you respond to I want you to explain to me why you choose this intervention you have to explain what it is about invention that you use for this young man so in this case, Can it's I ask play. To what okay. Rohina said, um, I was thinking Go that ahead. at his age, he's not able to express feelings in the way an adult would be able to. 
And yes. so through play, you can help to, you know, to see what is happening. <coughs> you yes. would use terms that is um, that is at his level of reasoning. Yes. And based on based on how he interacts with the toys, you can have an idea of what is happening in his um in in terms of his psyche. He can express himself more. Okay. To to toys. All right. All right. Good. That, that's explain, that explanation is is, is 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 great. So we will talk more about play in a in 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 a, in, in a while. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Notice we haven't talked about treatment plan yet. That has to be another class by itself. But but um, is it clear so far what this young man? Anything about medications? You see this child? Victor suggesting family therapy yeah. in addition to I haven't the seen I haven't seen any questions from him. Where is it? Right, Where is it? it? Let me post Please. it. Yeah. Anything else? Any any do you think he needs medical interventions? It, it did mention that he was getting medication. It says prescribed medication. Mm -hmm. Behavioral speech therapy had proved to be nominally effective. The case is gone, so I, I can't remind, I, I, I'm not seeing the case. But, but, he, but he was getting medication. So in other words, do you think that, um, do you think a multidisciplinary approach will work for this young man? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yes. I think so. In, Give me, give me, give me examples, please. Tell me, tell me what you mean by multi. What else will, ha who else will be involved in this treatment, apart from you? The parents. His yes. Anybody his, else? His, his Teacher and parents. What other professionals will be involved? Psychiatrist. Therapist. Psychiatry. Yes. Anybody else testing, will be involved? Testing. testing? Yes. Very good, yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Family therapy, yes. Well, the medical doctor is already involved. So the medical doctor is involved in medications. Anything yeah. else? And maybe the school counselor too. School counselor? Mm -hmm. Sure enough, yes. yes. All right. So so basically you have I've taken you through a simple what I expect you to do in terms of, 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 of a case. We haven't touched a treatment plan, which we are going to be touching um, another time on Wednesday, God willing. But let's let's continue. I want to get to ethics tonight, and, and I want to I want to get to ethics. Um, um, let, let's look. But let's let's look at. Um, Last thing I want to say about cases is that um, that there's a comment from Hella Jean. Use okay, thank you. Use point charts and talk economies. Now um, they can shape and reward. Yes, very good, Hella Jean and uh, Victor. Good, very good. And I have a post in one from. Okay, well, post they can see. Post it that I can see it. Yes, I posted it. It's so do you get a sense of what I'm expecting in the, when you when you do a case? It's to come up with ways that are measurable. We haven't done the treatment plan with goals and objectives, but we're just coming up with treatment. Play therapy, develop confidence in the child, get to think like the child brings strong bonding. Okay. <clears throat> this is a last. I think I'm going to talk about in terms of case conceptualization is that um, that generally this is just a comment, last comment under conceptualization that that childhood disorders you need to write childhood disorders as what is known as substantial impact on the growth process.
And what process does that have? Growth. Growth process. Growth process. So, so, um, so, um, and there are several, there are several uh, impact on growth in children. Several impact to note in children. One, one is so social impairment. Social impairment. So Social impairment. Two, family life. These are impacts family on life? growth. Family life. Three, classroom learning. One, social impairment. Two, family life. Three, classroom learning. Four or C, friendships or peer friendships. Are these dogs barking? It's my barking. So let me mute my. Everybody mute, mute my. Mic. Yeah, I hear yes, barking. Sir, I, I don't mute. know what I'm hearing. I don't know if I'm hearing howling winds or. Um, is it lights going off down there? I mean, I'm hearing howling winds. Ah. Peace. I give you peace. Four is leisure activities. Four is leisure Doctor, Doctor Mark, that would be five, Doctor Mark. I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. I, Mr. I had a senior moment, Mr. Barr. Okay, Doctor Mark, that's on to me, sir. Five is leisure activities, I'm sorry. Five is leisure activities. Leisure activities. Six. Distress for the child. Distress for the child. F or six. Disruption for other people. Disruption for other people. Disruption for other people. disruptions. All right, that is the end of case conceptualization introduction to it in a nutshell. We're going to look at some ethical issues in treatment. That's important. We have to go through this. So please bear with me. Ethical Dr. issues. Mark, in, yes. On Wednesday, on Wednesday we're going to look at the treatment planning. Yes, yes, I plan to do that. I plan to do that. I just need to and um, and how to interview. Um, I'm going to look at treatment planning and how to interview. The case took a lot of time and I thought it would. And how to interview. I'm going to be looking at, for Wednesday people, I'm going to be looking at child interview and history. And I'm going to be looking at um, um, and uh, the, the uh, interviewing parents. I believe these, some of these notes are online. I strongly recommend that you review the child interview and history, interviewing parents that I don't, that I can just, once you read the notes, they are there, please, and come back to ask questions. It's, I don't, but the only one you don't have is the um, treatment plan. It's not on, online. I'm going to have to give that to you. So ethics is going to be but a part of the exam, Dr. Mark? Possibly, yes. Okay. All right, let's, um, let's look at current ethical issues in treatment. Very important uh, topic. We need to discuss it. I think it's very important. We're going to try and finish it tonight. I can't. I don't want to take it over into the next class. It's going to interfere with what I'm trying to do. Now, um, even though we are not medical doctors per se, um, but we are still bound by the Hippocratic Oath in ethics. That is, do no harm. To, pe to clients. That includes children. That includes adolescents. Like oh, to do no harm. In other words, 
we, we are we are focused on what is the best interest of the child or teenager. We are so doing no harm is is focused on what is the best interest of the of the um, of a teenager or child. Two, these are just some ethical guidelines. We are bound to protect the privacy of the child. Let me note very carefully. We must, we shall, and we will protect the privacy of the child's communication to you. What the child tells you in the session, you must keep to yourself. You don't go and tell parents. That's violating their privacy. Protect the pro except in one case where they threaten to hurt themselves. You break it. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark, for that limitation there. Let me repeat. You must, must keep children's confidence. You don't break it. If not, you are violating their, your, your rights to privacy. Except if they threaten to hurt themselves. In fact, you need to let them know that sometimes uh, what we say in this session will stay here. You talk to teenagers, because it's at another high level, but except if you threaten to hurt yourself or others, I am obligated, mandated, to break the confidentiality. Is it clear? Wouldn't you be taking, clear? In, in, would you be taking an informed consent from um, at the beginning of the session, Dr. Ma? Um, yes. And you have so all these things will be laid out. So all these things will be laid out yes. there. Okay. Yes, but okay. children don't give in but for your information and I you've dropped minors, the bombs, I minors, say it anyway. Manners. Manners. Children do not, not give. give informed consent. Children, hold on. Children give what is known as assent. Verbal assent. A S S E N T. Children, yes. They don't okay. give informed consent. They're, too, they're not. It's not legal. They give assent. So if they say, "I don't want to come to treatment," you cannot force them to come. If the parent says you must go, you cannot force them. Doctor Mark. Yes, Mister Bar. You mentioned harm to self. What about harm, harm to others? That is also I did say that. I, that's part of the also part of the what is known as the the your 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 um the therapist's responsibility to treatment that you must inform the client that we will keep confidences. There is a in the rest there it's um the client. In fact, I'm, I, let me jump the gun because uh, since it's coming up, clients have privilege. They have a right to privilege. It's legal. You can, if, if, your, if your case, if your case notes get subpoenaed in court, you can say, uh, you can invoke therapy, therapist clan privilege. You can invoke that, but, but, um, but, but you need to let them know that there, but there are limits to confidential. You must tell the child or the teenager that there are limits to confidentiality. That some that your case notes um, that in case of a threat to hurt yourself, I have to report it. If there's a, if somebody hurts you or touch you inappropriately, I have to report it. Okay, somebody's asked, can someone tell me what heading we were under for the notes just given? I don't know what notes I gave notes on. Um, I I wrapped up. Give me this on, one, Doctor um, Matt. Current ethical issues issues in treatment. Okay, current, current ethical, ethical issues in treatment, issues hello, Jane. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. All right, no, so, she so, actually wanted the heading for a note before. Diagnosis. Oh, Someone has to do prognosis. Diagnosis. It is impact on, impacts on the, um, the, the growth process. I'll tell okay, her. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. please, okay. thank you. All right, so, so further guidelines. You need to respect the child as a family as well as race, religion. Let me, let me repeat. Race, religion, sexual orientation. May I, may I emphasize, students? Race, 
religion, sexual orientation, economic status, education, and intellectual level. So if you cannot work with a, a gay teenager, do not see them to convert them to your way. Dr. Mack, please repeat. That May I repeat? That you just read a while ago. I said, respect the child as well as family, regardless of race, religion, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, education, and intellectual level. So basically, you need to respect them for what they come. If a child, if a teenager comes to you and they're exploring their sexuality, you don't tell them, oh, you know, um, it's just, you know, you are to respect them. That's your job. You're not, to, you're not there to convert the patient. You're there to help them. So you may have teenagers who may express same-sex preferences. If you, um, you're there to work with the issues. You're not there to convert them. You're not, you're not pastors. Well, some of you are, but in case... Oh, thank you, you, oh, thank you Dr. Function. Mack, for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dr. Mack, um, let me ask Yes, Mr. Here. Mack. <laughs> yes. Um, what if a client comes to you yes. and the client is saying, what makes you different? They, they, they have seen you several times and they want for you now to tell them in terms of your own religion and your own belief. Is that appropriate to share? That's a di well, that's different. That's different. It, well, I, I it depends on what you share. Well, it yes. depends on what you share. I mean, there are boundary issues. You're not there. I mean, you're there in the capacity as a counselor. Yes. And so I know that some people may disagree. But if you if you travel out to Jamaica, you come here, they will they will they will take your life from you. You do not violate people's rights. And I'm right. making it very, very clear. And I know um that, that even but at I that suppose point even Dr. Mark. Yes. But at that point in time, you're not violating their rights. They have asked you to share in relation yeah, Yes, as long as they ask you in terms it's a religious issue. Okay. And in some instances, if you, if you, if you, like for you, Mr. Bar, you're a pastor, you may want to share some of that, but it's, it is advisable, I mean, listen carefully, it's advisable to refer them to a pastor in order to avoid any, any, any issues of conflict of interest. Okay. You refer them to a pastor. You work with your issues of uh, of the of your conflict psychologically. They didn't come to yes. you for they just ask for but you don't want to separate. I, I'm I'm sorry. This is how I is so it is. And so once you go to, to Jamaica, you need to be very careful. You get sued, and I'm and I'm yes. warning you. Yes. Even in okay, Nigeria, so, Doctor I don't know about Nigeria. I know about North America, but I, that maybe there are people are getting sophisticated. Um, so five, rapport with the child is 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 important. I'm gonna have I'm gonna go through some of this and load it up on the on on the um on Sorry, the post, on the I uh, platform. I think I might have missed. What was three? Respect the child. Is that ice cream? Race, religion, and so the child. Okay, um, somebody has so their mic. Four. Could you yeah, mute? So we're mute four. your mics, please. I'm hearing, I'm hearing. Students, mute your mics, please. Unless you need to ask a question, mute the mics. I'm getting feedback. It's, it's in my, it's giving me a headache. Please, I'm sorry. Um, I'm saying for three that it's um respect, respect the child in terms of family. As, I'm sorry, respect the child as well as family in terms of race, sexual orientation, religion, socioeconomic status, education, and intellectual level. So we're at four now? Yes. Oh. To provide development and autonomy of the child. To provide the development and autonomy of the child. That's four. Five, to establish rapport with the child 
or adolescent and the child's parents. Let me repeat. Let me be very clear. You are, you are establishing rapport with the child or adolescent and the child's and, and their parents and guardians. You can't leave out the parents. You have to because they have rights and legal consent. You have to also involve them. No, I would no. As I said before, I talked about um, children giving assent to treatment and parents giving inf uh, informed consent. It's a signed doc. Once it's signed, it's legal. And informed consent, incidentally, is six months and more, up to six months rather. Informed consent is six months. It, it's six months that six is months valid what? for. Oh, valid. Oh, okay. It Inf expires after six months. Yes. Okay. And must be regularly updated to maintain confidentiality and privacy. Now, I did have a copy of the informed consent. I don't know. I did not give it to Mr. Nyami in, in fairness. Um, I would like you to see it. I don't know if he can... Um, what I will have to do is, uh, Mr. Nyami, can I, can I send it to you for reference afterwards to put up on the screen, please? Is he, is he still there? Yes, you can send it. You can send it now. Afterwards. Send it now or, or, or later. You can send it now too, if you choose. Okay, thank you. All right. So I'm going to have the students see it because it's important. Very important. Um, I need to I need to look for it. I, I have it what here. Is, what is this exactly? Informed consent. Informed consent document. You, is it on Moodle? Because I could find it. Sorry, if it's on. Okay, well, it's, it's, put it, bring it up, please. Um, all right, so then, so, so, um, so we're done with guidelines for ethics, but let's look at before. Next heading. The clinician is responsible for the four, four things. Next heading. The clinician is responsible for four things. One, a safe environment. Safe environment and communication of trust and respect. Safe environment and communication of trust and respect. Two, listening and being in genuinely interested in what the client has to say. Listening. Sorry, Dr. Mark, I missed miss that. Trust and what? Trust, communication of trust and? Respect. Respect. Okay, sorry. Listening. Listening and being interested in what the client has to say or being generally interested in what the client has to say. Three. I'm repeating it, but it's also important and re it's more re-emphasis than anything else. Establishing rapport with the child client. Can underscore establishing rapport with the child client. It's more repeating and underscoring the importance again. Lastly, a bit longer, but it's D4 or, or D, whatever. that there is a tension because we have to protect the, the, the teenagers or the child's privacy when we work with the parents. There is a tension in trying to protect the, the child or teenager's privacy when we work with the guardians 
and parents. So for example, uh, privacy can be valid because we have to work with school, we have to work with the family, the structures, other organizations. So these are some of the things, your listeners, you are responsible for how you monitor and how you manage the the, the number of 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 of, um, of stakeholders in the in the therapy se therapy session is your responsibility. Let's look briefly at some ethical considerations, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we're going to wrap up for the night, and you can ask questions. But let's but let's use the time to generate some discussion on this. Um, you suggestions for you to consider. I have a number of them. I have about I have I have eight and we have on we have we have and we'll 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 look at them for we break for the evening for the night I should say that you are entitled not tentacled sorry you are mandated to keep records. Let me repeat you are mandated to keep records of your sessions. It is illegal and unethical if you don't do that. And you can you can be censured if you're somewhere else if you don't keep records. You must keep records. You must document by progress notes. You must document by progress notes. And Mr. Nyame, could you look to see if there's a progress note on the on the system on the platform please? I'm not certain if I put one up but they can see what it looks like. Okay. So you document. So pro look if you can look, please, and let me know, if, and I'll send you one to put up there. I'm not seeing the informed consent, so you may have to send it, please. Okay, so I have to send informed consent. Okay, so um, so I so I send send informed consent. Um. I may have to send it after the fact. I don't have my thumb drive is not here, so I have to send it to you up for you to put up that we can look at it later on. Okay. Or another time. Okay. Um. But but let's but let's let's continue anyway. Um. So. So therefore, um. So, documentation is normally by progress notes called progress notes. And a progress note, let me explain what that is. A progress note is a summary. A progress note is a summary of the client's narrative about symptoms. A summary or a narrative of the client's problem reporting. Reporting about symptoms and your interpretation of what the client is saying and your interpretation let me see if I can find it let me see if I can find uh, uh, so I'm going my I'll go some and look somewhere else to see if I find it um, Are there any questions so far? Are there any questions so far? No questions. So process so but but process notes, not progress, process notes are different. They are not kept in the record. Process notes are different. These are not kept in the record. Instead, a process note is a snapshot of your therapeutic intervention and information that you would not normally put in the notes. Some things you don't put in the notes. Not everything you put in a note. In a, you have to be very careful because you can, if you're subpoenaed, you're going to have to defend it. So you have to be very careful what you put in progress notes. So process notes are different. They are not in the official record, and it is a snapshot of your therapeutic impression, and in and has information that you don't want in the record. 
So for example, let's say a teen that tells you that they're sexually active and they don't want their mother, their parents to know. How do you handle that? Put it in Hello. the process notes. Put it in the process notes. Confidentially, far away. Mm -hmm. Would you tell the parents? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Even though it contradicts your religious, uh, your religious um, persuasion. No, sir. What's Not important? Your, your religious values or the, or the patient? Which is important? Patience. Patience. Yes, in trick in this case. Not you. You're, it's not about you and your religion and what you think. It's about the patient. Dr. Dr. Man. Yes, yes. Could we say that both of our, both of us are, both of us, both the client and the patient is important in that um, you respect the client's view and his, his, yes. faith and his, and his um, perspective. However, you are cognizant that mm -hmm. as a therapist are self-aware that they, your, your beliefs contradict that of the client. So you are aware that in the session that um, as, a, as a therapist, you are supposed to make an extra aware, cautious in treating the client because you do know that your beliefs, they, there's a contradiction with the beliefs. So it's important as a, as a therapist, you understand your beliefs and where you stand, but you have a respect for your clients. Both are important. Can we say that? Um, well, yes, but if, if your belief to the contradicts to the point where you where it, it blurs your objectivity, you need to refer the patient. You cannot sure. see the client. Refer. To refer the patient. Yes, to somebody else. You, in other words, I mean, I know people will disagree with me, but trust me, I've been there for years, and I know you cannot force religious beliefs on people. You will get sued, mm -hmm. and even to make it also, you cannot force your religious beliefs on people. It's unethical. I'm very sorry. We you all want to. We all want to uh, fulfill the Great Commission and talk about Jesus, but that's not the role. Doctor Mark, I'm not that's saying not the that place for that. The church is a place for that. Yes. I'm not Go saying ahead. that we are yes. I'm not saying that we are going to push our religion or try to to um to, to make the client see our, our point. I'm just saying yes. that the council is, is for us to be self aware. So we can yes. refer all our patients. You, it's just no, you cannot. But, no, and I would never, and I would not. And if if I were supervising, I would not allow you to refer them either. I'm just saying <laughs> that that you people have to be aware of counter transparency issues. Exactly. It's and you have to be, you have to make certain that you. But if it is very, it is to the point where it's it's so strong that you are not able, or you are impaired yourself. And if I were, and if were I there, everyone, Jack, one of you would go to therapy. We go to therapy. I suppose that most of you would have done it already, but you'd have gone to therapy. You would have done the, the testing to determine to deal with these issues that are going to come up, hmm. because countertransference is important. It is, it, it's a real, real event. It is not a joke. Dr. Mark. I posted a question from yes. Vic, a comment from Victor and a question from Elodie. I, okay, I did not see that. My apologies. Let me look. It can be put, just a moment, it can be put in code form since the best interest of the client is paramount in therapy. I don't understand what you, what you mean by code form. If you could explain what you mean by that. Um, he wants to reference the question where he asked about. Victor was referring to the question where I asked about if the client is sexually active and doesn't want his or her so mother. What does he mean by code form? I don't understand what he means by code form. What does he mean by code form? I maybe still don't understand. What short, maybe write it in short and so you alone would know if you pick up the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't need to put it in. You don't need to put it. You don't need to put it. Well, 
you well let me put it this way you determine what you put in the process notes if you think progress if you think it's important and it's there um, but the question is ethically are you going to tell the parents if not you will lose you will lose a child or they won't come back what if she decides to do an abortion knowing that it could be life threatening? Should we encourage a child to divulge this information? Very good question, very good ethical question. This question is asking about from Hello Jean about abortion, knowing that it will be life threatening. Okay, in this case, what would be done? Do you do you do you involve the parents? Mm -hmm. the child is pregnant or the teenager is pregnant, wants an abortion. What do you do in a case like this when the child only has assent? Parents have legal consent. What do you do? What I probably would do, maybe in a they project I would take, parent. is to um, encourage the child, give the, the child the option of informing the parents because the child would need some form of support, maybe financial support, support and other. So I would try to encourage the child to. Um, inform the parent or somebody that they can confide in and if they still don't want to do that I cannot initiate and, and um, inform them. It would have to be the child's decision. But you just said that it's, a, it's life threatening. Isn't that something that the child has this abortion? Huh? Isn't that something that could harm the child? Isn't that something that could harm the child? Do no harm. Child um, parent. Threatening. Probably yes. What's your resp What's your ethical responsibility? But in telling, but in telling the parents, um, what if that leads to harm to the child? In what way? <laughs> uh, we're talking about Jamaica, you know, Doctor Mac. Um, we beat oh, children in Jamaica yeah. with electric wire and all these things, you know. They will go to jail here and in America. Yeah, man. Um, our context is far removed from that one, Doctor Mac. Um, but yeah. what if we tell the parents and you know, it, it lead to a serious um, beating or maybe even lead to death? So, you know, and if you don't tell the parents, the child dies. I would, I would go with Nordy on that one, Dr. Mark, in relation to letting the child know that they have an obligation to their parents to inform them pertaining yeah. to the pregnancy. And okay. the way forward. And, and let me say this to you. you. You're on the right track. You document, in this case, you need to document what you said. Oh, yeah. You document the, the, the statement that we talked about the issues. We encourage the patient to talk to parents or the patient refuse based upon professional judgment. And you, you begin to make an assessment. So you say, you know, um, go ahead. What's the matter? But then but we need to look also at the fact that um, abortion is abortion illegal for, for, for children. What about that aspect of it? So it depends on how old. Well, we have to have well, a child case. Well, these are well, these are ethical issues that um, that we have to resolve as uh, as clinicians. Um, so we, 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 if a doctor performs an abortion. Um, mm -hmm. They also will be in trouble for a child. Yes. So it's not so, about you have to inform the parents. Yes. So we have to, so in in resolving ethical dilemmas, we have to look at two issues. One, we look at ethical issues that generally will in fact will impact the welfare of society. In resolving these is ethical issues, which where, where children are concerned. We look at issues that are ethics that are going to impact the welfare of society. And two, we look at issues ethical that's going to impact the child's own, the child's safety and security. So in this case, it seems that you may want to break confidentiality. If there is danger to self and the child, Child is 13 years old. What's your what's what's your ethical responsibility? There is there is clear. There's going to be clear danger. Your role is to report. 
Now I know we have issues of garrison thinking and we have issues of uh, of informal culture and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But you do need to, there, there's sometimes you're going to have to report despite the prevailing thinking culturally. Okay. Um, so I'm still waiting to hear from Mr. Mr. Chair about code form. I still don't understand what he means, so I, I can answer if he doesn't send me the question. But is it clear so far, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, these ethical issues are coming up. That's why we have to go through them. Um, so, so let me underscore again that the patient and client, actually, the guardian is a holder of privilege in a child case. The guardian or the parent is the holder of privilege information. Parent can says, I don't want to I don't want to send that to the doctor. You have a right to censor it. You are the holder of the records. That's your responsibility. The, 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 so if the if the parent wants a copy of the records, they have a right to it, but they don't have a right to the original records. You can make a copy and send and give to them, but you want to encourage them to say, you know, there are some things in it that you may not understand, and it may jeopardize treatment if you get a copy of it. So let me again, let me be clear. The, the patient slash parent, they are the holders of privilege. It's the clinician is the holder of the client of the client records. I hope I'm just very clear on that. And two, on this on the ethical considerations, respecting boundaries. You need to respect the boundaries. Respect boundaries. You have to have professional boundaries in life when it comes to treatment. Avoid situations that com can compromise your integrity. Avoid situations that can compromise integrity. Again, I'm going to repeat, avoid situations that can compromise integrity. That is, for example, avoid the temptation to have preschool children sit in your lap, hug you, or visit their homes. Now, mm, I'm, I, I have an issue with that, but um, to hug us, visit the homes. Dr. Mack. Do you have uh, a five-year-old sitting on your Yes, Mr. Mack. Uh, not to sidetrack, Dr. Mack, or to distract. Mm -hmm. uh, Marlene says that she's actually, uh, she has been on, she's seen but not hearing everything that is happening. So just let it. Okay. Well, let her know that if she can, she's at least it's been taped, she can listen after. Tell her my apologies, but she can probably listen after the um, the session is over. Will do, Dr. Mack. You're, you're talking you. about a five-year-old sitting on your lap. Yes. Do you let children sit in your lap, especially men? No. I, I do, Dr. Max. She's my daughter. That's about okay. it. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. I want you to do that. I, I just posted a comment Dr. from Rennie. Okay. Let's it's, well, let's, let's it's clear so far for me, we should... Safeguard the welfare of a child and safety and security of a child. We are counseling as our ethical. Yes. Thank you. I agree. Do we allow children to sit on our laps? It's very, you know, they're nice. They're, 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 they're nice. But do we allow them to do that? We have to be very careful in this life. We have to, one, one accusation. We are dead in the water. Any accusations against us, we are dead. It's hard to shake that negative, negative label. Avoid the presence of evil. Dr. McKinney, please repeat the sentence that says avoid situations that... Avoid situations that... Oh, avoid situations that compromise our integrity. Professional integrity, that is. Avoid situations... Yes. Thank you. And um, I'm looking at the 
the patient client relationship, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it, in cases where I know that you have, you, you want to avoid evil, as you would say, or accusations, but then a client may approach you in for children. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it seem cold and distant if they aren't allowed to, as you say, sit in your lap? Or if, if any form of closeness? How, how do you build that relationship? Why would you want the chat? Why would you want the chat to sit in your lap? That's the question. Not, let us say not sit in my lap. Let us say a child wants to embrace me you know, or a hug. You know, how would I approach? Them? If I if, if I should say no, you can't do that, or I you know wouldn't it seem distant? Because this be not age appropriate behavior. Give a high five. Well, that's that's okay. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm just talking about what you touch the child, I mean the child touches you in a, I mean, in places that that are inappropriate, they touch you on your breast, they touch you somewhere else, that's what I mean. Oh. You need to be careful. Well, I can see that. Okay, I can see your... So you have children who are, they are suggesting they will touch you. You don't want that to happen. You just don't want that to happen. Abuse children, you don't want that happening. You have to be very careful. Men, especially with women, I mean, you know, girls who are subject, they're sub seductive. Be careful, Mr. Barr. Be careful. Well, Doctor Mac, um, I am extremely careful to the point where I, my secretary knows me so well that just one look, she knows she needs to call me in like five minutes, or just yes. come in and disturb me. You know. Um, yes, you have need to do that. You, I mean, this is, we are in a, we're in a world of, of, of evil and people, the, the, you know, you just not, don't know. You have to, as a man you, and, and woman, you just have to be very, very careful. You have to be very, very careful. You can't be naive in this business. You really can't be. I know you want to help, but you, you can't be naive. Yes, Dr. Mark, and especially okay, so what about, man. Yes. So what about emotional support from teachers? Um, as children, we are, are the ones that first advanced us with their hugs. Um, I'm not certain, is this related to treatment? I mean, if, if, in the, if it's in the classroom and the child, that's a different, I'm talking about the therapeutic relationship where you have to establish boundaries. Um, I do not, I do but, to know how the world is coming, I might need to stop allowing them to sit on my lap. This is not, oh, I'm not understanding this. Um, could you explain what you mean by your statement, Hello, Jean? Um, I'm not very clear what you're trying to say. Could you rephrase, please, when you get a chance? All right, um, let's continue. Older children, teenagers, with that older teenager, trust and confidentiality are important. With older teenagers, you must be, they must trust you. If they don't trust you, you are dead in the water. Forget it. You will not go anywhere with them. They have to trust, they, you have to, um, they have to trust you. They must that they're not judged or retaliated against in the session. So teenagers, so working with older children and teenagers, you have to be able to, for them to be able to trust you. Four. Communication with parents and as well as the, as well as the, the, the child teenager will be very difficult. You have to try to balance. On one hand, you want to know, the parents need to know, they have a right. Parents have a legal right to know what's going on in treatment. But you also have a right to protect the confidentiality of what is said in the session. How do you deal with that tension? How do you deal with it when the parent needs to know and the child has a right for, 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 for um, what is said in the session be made private? So the way to get around that is that um, know that the parents have rights to be updated on treatment. 
However, you need to establish with the parents and the child initially, before session start, that occasionally you will need to give feedback, that the child knows the parents are they're aware. So, every, so all parties are on the same page. So let them know before that they'll that that, that you're gonna be giving feedback. You need to also let them know that some things will not be disclosed to the parents, that there are some things that we can't talk about. We tell you generally and um, about treatment, but I can't tell you exactly what's going on, what, what the child says. That's a violation of, 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 of protocol. Any comments on four? Of course, a comment from Rene. Okay, so she had, okay, I, okay. She said, I'm totally agreeing with setting boundaries in regards to young children hugging or sitting in the laps of counselors in spite of the support they would get from us. This is a dangerous practice. Yes, it is. Very dangerous. Um, so, so you need to, you need to sit down with the parents and the, 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 the older children and, and, and set out how you're going to deal with um, get information to the parents and to maintain confidentiality. So five is in addition to this number. Um, it's an in addition. It's another addition. The clan should ensure that the schedule, duration of sessions. The the the, the clan should ensure that the, the schedule, duration of sessions, frequency of it. And how long is treatment should be communicated? Ensure that the schedule, how long is the session, how frequent it is, and how long is treatment should be communicated to deal with to uh, ensure privacy. So following up with that, you need to tell the teenager or the young older child that you need to follow up with the parents and explain why. Explain why. Explain why you will do that. And seven communication challenges. So do not this is what you don't do. Do not discuss issues with a parent in a waiting room. Do not do that. Do not discuss issues with a parent in a, in a waiting room. That is violating the child or the teenager's confidentiality and privacy. Do not discuss issues relating to the child with the parents in a waiting area or reception area. That is violating confidentiality or privacy. Don't do that. Avoid continuing under seven. Avoid meeting with the parents directly before the session or after the session. Avoid meeting with the parents directly before the session or after the session. In other words, a child may think you're colluding with the parents. You're, 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 you're carrying news, as they say. The best option to deal with that is to have a separate session with the parents. They come separately to a news to a different session. Any questions so far, ladies and gentlemen? Any questions so far? Seems to be none. Dr. Mark, you have about one minute left. <laughs> okay, written okay I, I, me too. Written communication. All right. There are a number of written communications that we need to talk about. 
I, I think we'll wrap up here. We can we can finish that up on on Wednesday, God willing. So before, yes. Remember on Wednesday, Doctor Mac, we're going to talk about the exam. Oh, I forgot about that. So on Wednesday, we'll talk about the clinical interview with children and parents. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at treatment plans, uh, treatment planning, and pl and treatment plans. And um, hopefully, we will try and do another case practice again. So please look at your cases that you got and come to discuss the the case. I will. Uh, I'm going to be putting. Yes. We have a lot of we have a lot of things to discuss on the written communication. Um, I have about um. Let me see. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Mercy. eight points. Eight points. No, it's okay. We just have to curtail tonight. People are tired. I am. I have a question I'm from Alison. I posted a question from Alison. Okay. How do we build trust with, especially teenagers, say, uh, around 13, 14, if that teen is having certain problems at home with parents? Many won't open up to you because you tell them what they say that impede the process. How do we get a very good question on that? Um, Now, the question is that, um, first of all, the important thing with a teen is to build trust. So if it means at the expense of the parents that you will want to let the parents know, you can say, well, what I, you can say to them, look, I know it's difficult for you to trust right now, but my job, but right now what my basic role is that I'll be there for you. As I said before to you, that, um, that, uh, there are two things in which I'll break confidential if you're threatening to hurt yourself or others. It would be nice if sometimes you could, one of the things that's why you're here is that you want your parents to be able to rapport with you and to talk with you better. So um, let us see if we can build on the trust first and then we can see how we can help your parents and we can see if we, how we can deal with that. But I think one of the things is that you may want to start sharing that I can be able to help you is that maybe you know your parents don't seem to know what's going on and so maybe that may be one of the reasons. Can you think about that? That's one way of looking working with the, with the, with the, with the, with the teenager. Hope that answered the question. Okay, so um, we will we will continue with the we wrap up the ethical considerations on Wednesday. We were going to try our best to go through the, the interview with the child. And um, I believe it's also on the, Mr. Niamh, I believe it's also last year's, um, it's also on last year's, um, the, there is, a, there is a, a, a class I had with the students last year. So you may want to start look, listening to that also for Wednesday. And come, as I said, read the notes, the, the notes on, online, the, the handouts are there, to, and come to ask questions. That way I don't have to spend a lot of time on that interview. Is that clear? Is that clear? Hello? Hello? Yes, Dr. Ma. Dr. Ma, very clear. And we want to spend yes, more time Dr. on Ma. treatment yes, plan. Dr. Ma. We want to spend more time on treatment, treatment plan. So please, yes, if you... Yes, there um, the, the, the uh, handouts um, and when I am done with this I'm gonna send this by uh, by um, by to put on the mood mood platform any other questions mm -hmm. Dr. Mark. yes can, can you repeat you wanted what to be available what video for week four uh, no, no video <laughs> There are videos there. There's a video you just watched. Um, there are some videos there to watch. Uh, on um, I know there are one on treatment approaches. They can watch that. We may have to. We may watch some in class. I'll try my best. That's why I'm saying we don't. We won't have any um, presentations on Wednesday. Also, we're gonna go to the class. Um, so there are the, the videos on treatment approaches. I believe. Okay. There is one. Um, what I will do, I will touch and play therapy. And like I said before, there are there are handouts on the treatment approach. I put them there. They are all there. 
You may not be able to go through all of them, but basically they're there for you. So you need to have any questions, ask. I'll try my best. All right? Okay. Dr. Max, what yes. do you have in the exam? It depends on what the, um, what the registrar says. I plan to send it this week that they can have it. Um, I don't know. I have not heard from. Are they having issues with, with communication in the registry? The phones are still working. The phones Dr. are down. Dr. Mack, we need to talk about uh, that exam or anything is sent to the Dr. registrar. Dr. Mack, could you give us a pen of paper I take home instead of? <laughs> um, Noria, let us talk about that on Wednesday you now when Dr. Mack fresh, please. No, I'm, I'm a bit tired right now. I'm not. But, um, I'm not focused right now, but I'm very tired. Um, I, spoke, I spoke to her and she said that we talk about it on Wednesday. Yeah, let's talk about it on bring Miss Miss Miss. Will you be on the on Wednesday, Michelle? I ought to be. I took Elsie space. Will you be? Well, she has computer issues, you know. So, she, so you may have to take it I again because she has computer problems. I ought to be because I took Elsida's space and I did ask if I was going to be on the chat on Wednesday. Other th otherwise, I would not have come on this one. So I ought to be on Wednesday. Well, I, okay, well, I know Miss. Okay, okay. I know she's having trouble with her. Um, she said she prefers to listen by YouTube because she's having trouble with her computer. So, so I'll you be on may want to come on. Yes, you need to be on because if you need to ask, you you seem to be sharp in asking the questions because I will forget. Uh, okay. Students, if you have a take-home exam, uh, note note that the exam time, and it's, it's all take-home. So, okay, well, let's let's discuss that on Wednesday. You know, I I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm very tired. I'm, I'm getting tired, so I'm getting my eyes are shutting. I'm tired now. So, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? People who have, you know, you can go back and pick up what you have not picked up in the, in the notes um, for the for the, for the lecture. Okay, do you it's still taping as far as I'm concerned. Do you want to say anything about the guidelines that you sent for the learning project, Dr. Ma? I don't know if persons sure. were able to. Oh, yes. That um, I but if yes. You, if, but maybe they don't have any questions. Maybe they don't have any questions, Dr. Mark. If they did, they probably would ask. So, don't worry about it. I have a Does question anybody from have Hello any questions? Hello. Go ahead. Go I, ahead, please. I just posted a question from Hello Jean. Okay, let me go back to that. For the individual pros project, are there any limits? No, they're not. It's a project. You can do it. Well, I don't expect 50 pages of, of, of uh... <laughs> but, but Dr. Mark, have we gotten any guidelines for the individual project as there? As there? It's in the syllabus. Isn't that the treatment plan that we haven't learned as yet? <laughs> hmm? Oh, B of... Oh, don't need to be anxious, Miss. Why are you so anxious? But no, I'm just asking because um, um, Hello Jean mentioned it, it, the individual projects. I'm just wondering if 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 we, there's something that we need to be starting because as far as I know, we haven't learned treatment planning here. And that's what the project's supposed to be about. So I'm just asking. But you haven't but you haven't wanted to do that. I will I will be doing that on Wednesday. That's what I'm saying to you. Read and uh -huh. you need to read the notes on interview with, with child to order for me to cut down on a lecture. It's there. And it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about interviews, let me know. I wanna focus more on um on the treatment plan. So Dr. Matt, they, they just to anyway, it's all right. Go Wednesday. ahead. No, Dr. Mack, it's okay. I asked my question already, so I'm good. Anybody before I go? Wednesday. Anybody else before I go? Okay, if there are, if there are no... I didn't hear you. Just for your consideration, when you come back on Wednesday, um, if you could relook at having the two assignments, the individual um, project as well as the group case study on the same day. 
June 6th. I thought they weren't due on the same day. Oh, I'm seeing Dr. Them. Mark. The, hold on. Um, um, Ma, um, Marshall, I think I need to say something now. The, um, the, the case study that Dr. Mack sent to us, she had sent an email to us to tell us that that is actually just a, um, a practice case. She's actually going to send another one. Right, but well, that's a group, the group, for the, you mean the group case study? The, the group that, case study with John, the group case study with Johnny Walker that came as a, a case study, but the questions were not um, very clear. Dr. Max sent some guidelines this afternoon to say these are the sections that we need to look at for that particular case. Now, in questioning that with her, she said that she also said in the in the email that it's we're not going to be penalized for any right or wrong answer. It's just for us to practice and we'll get grades for group effort. However, there is going to be another group case that she's going to give us. I will send that on the weekend. I'll so, send her official case on the weekend for you to, for you to start so to Dr. practice. Mark, if you send that other group case along with the individual case, um, we need to talk about the time. Right. No, no, no. no hold on. I said, oh, just a moment. I, I, it's getting past my bedtime. What I said was, the individual, I um, remember saying this, that people have to look up their own case for the individual. I'm not going to Six no, man, we understand that. No, man, we understand that. that. Dr. Yeah, we understand that, Dr. Mack, but we, we understand that because he mm -hmm. did say to us, I'm just saying that this, this the Johnny Walker is something that we need to meet and do and send to you, but there's an official one that you're going to also send to us that we need to also do as well. So in essence, you're going yes, to do two. Johnny Walker is going to be discussed. Yes, oh, but Johnny Walker is going to be discussed. In the class on Wednesday, well, just go to the groups and meet and discuss it. So how would you What's give that? us points then if we're going to discuss it in class? Don't worry about that. You will work. Just a moment. You will. <laughs> you will work on the case. We discuss mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. sub. I mean, or you submit. You submit, and then we'll discuss and I'll know. Um, no, based, no, I'll ask me. people. What's that? I'm confused. We're going to submit and then discuss, discuss and then submit, or do submit <laughs> and discuss and understand. Dr. Mack is tired. Thanks Which is why I say we discuss it on Wednesday. Let's discuss it on Wednesday. Um, for Hello, Jean. Her group started with the Johnny case. Um, Hello, Jean said her group started working on Johnny's case. Okay, go ahead and work on the, go ahead and work on the case. So do we just submit it work. then, Dr. No, what I'm just saying is no. What I'm saying is go ahead and work on the case as is as a, as, as a group, but right. you will still discuss it and submit what you have as a group effort. When do we submit it? Today. When should we submit it? Well, whenever you can. Bef submit it before okay. the week is out. Submit it before the week is out. Then I can look at it and keep it. Okay, as long as you do the case. I mean, each person I've been asking people in the groups to give me the diagnosis, and you tell me. We have to figure a way how to do that because of this. We have the extreme problems with the tube, and we have the, all that. Mm. So we're going to have to have, I'm suggesting that we may have, I, I'm trying, I'm not talking to Mr. Niam, how we're going to sort this out. Um, but go ahead and meet in your, go ahead and meet in your, um, I tell you what, go ahead and meet in your groups. Submit the case to me, what you have, whatever you have done. Just submit it to me, and, and then we discuss. I'll keep, the, keep whatever you submit, up, but then we still discuss it. Okay? So even if we don't get a chance Walker to complete it, case? The Johnny, yes, the Johnny Walker case. So Dr. Mack, even if we don't get a chance okay. to finish in terms of objectives and goals and so on, just so I'm, not, I'm not expecting you to do the goals and objectives. All I want, okay. again, yeah. is the treatment approach. I want what I ask you. That's all I mean. I, I'm not expected to go on objectives. I'm going to be teaching that tomorrow. I, I mean, not tomorrow, on Wednesday. But you didn't what put I, it in the email, though, you know, Dr. Ma. It's there in the email. I, what's that? It's there in the email. Well, what I'm saying to you, that I remember, is that you do a simple treat goals and objectives and let's look at it. That's all you need to do. Follow yeah. your treatment plan. That's all you need to do. Okay, Dr. Ma. Right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to fall apart. It's almost midnight. 
for me. Enjoy your night, Miss. Please. And it was way past my bedtime. Enjoy your night. Oh, it's morning. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I gotta go to bed. All right, Doctor Mac. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. Bye bye. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. I will. If I need to talk to you. If I need to email again, I will do so. But um, I am. I can't stay up anymore. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, Mac, for you. your for right, patience. Okay. Have a good. Take care. Have a good morning. You too. Take Thank care. You. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Pat. Pat.